Hello everybody, welcome to week two of the CLOL tournament for UNC League of Legends Esports. I'm Nev Turkid Daruman and I'm here joined with my fellow caster for today, Ryan McDad. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm excited to cast some more UNC League of Legends. Last week we saw a quick uh, 35 minutes about of total game time. It I, was quick. Yeah. It was surprisingly very quick for League of Legends. <laughs> I'm expecting a little bit longer today, but I... Hey, I wouldn't mind to be out in 30 minutes if that's what happens to us. I agree. I mean, we are going up against today East Tennessee State University, and it looks like we are going to look at the rosters, actually, for today, um, if you want to take us through UNC. Yeah, UNC, we've got the same roster that you know and love. We've got Jay Gung in the top lane, Steve P in the jungle, Kersey in the mid lane. And then the bot lane duo of Posh1 and Rami Baba, who we had in the interview last week. And looking over at East Tennessee, we have Senior Ice in the top lane, 50 Cal Taco in the jungle, matches AL in the mid lane, Elo Vertigo, and I know who in the bot lane. Well, who is it? Who's the support? <laughs> I know who. Well, Are you going to tell me? I, I promise you, I know who. All right. Well, All right. as long as you know, that's what matters, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, just looking at those rosters, I'm really excited to uh, first off look at that bot lane matchup because I know last week in our first week CLO game, it was very, very exciting in the bot lane. We had the Pike pick with the Tristana. We had a lot of aggression down there, especially in that game too. It just seemed like a lot of action. And even like the way the meta is shifting right now, it seems like a lot of action is towards that bot lane. Um, so I think something to really look out for today, I think the bot lane matchup between those two duos will be really exciting. Yeah, Unleashed Teleport changes had a big impact on changing up the bot lane dynamic. Mm -hmm. It used to be a 4v2 in the bot lane, and now <laughs> it's getting closer to being more of a 3v3 uh -huh. with the jungle. Sometimes you've got those mid roams coming in, top laners can still TP to towers, but uh, it has really put a lot more emphasis on the bot lane, surprisingly, yep. and a lot less emphasis on the teleports changing the bot lane. Yep. And it looks like we'll be getting draft here, here going. going. And, you know, you know I'm really excited to see these picks and draft. Picks, picks and draft. draft. I think um, um, the, meta the meta has definitely shifted to a lot of specific champs just being so good and so dominant that it's kind of pick or ban. I'm thinking stuff like the Corky, like the Jinx, Victor, stuff like that. And right now, just picks and bans, I am not seeing a lot of those power picks banned out. I know comfort is a very big thing um, in these League of Legends competitive matches, but I don't know. I mean, kind of walk me through these bans right now. Uh, nothing really too interesting so far. I don't see the quirky ban. Victor's still up. Victor's ban. There it goes. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that, that what you said about comfort was very true. I think that uh, seeing the Twisted Fate on Kersey makes perfect sense. Uh -huh. He loves the pick. It has high impact. He's able to teleport to all those other lanes the second he gets six, which puts him even higher priority now that Unleashed Teleport is a thing. Uh, it lets him get around the map before 14. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the reason why we see Shen banned. Shen is also able to do that around six. But I think that most of the other bands, aside from Shen and Victor, are mostly looking at comfort here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that it looks like um, East Tennessee is looking to uh, pick some dashes comps. I think that's the reasoning behind the Vex ban, uh -huh. but allowing that Twisted Fate to come in while UNC is just banning out uh, high burst mages who can really do a lot of damage to him. This is uh, going to open up the Twisted Fate, and we'll see what this next pick is. Uh, Gwen and Viego for the side of East Tennessee. So they are getting some dashes, getting some aggression, and Nidalee coming out. Wow. That is very exciting. I know Nidalee is usually... Uh, Nidalee With Renekton. Renekton. Wow. Okay, so forget everything I was saying about playing bot side. This yeah. game is going to be top lane focused. I know Renekton Nidalee is a very dangerous comp. You were just talking about how the teleport changes make TF very good right now. Being able to impact the map without having to be burdened by the 14 minute teleport. Um, and there goes the Jinx. I think right now it looks like a very topside focused pick for UNC and just good overall picks for East Tennessee. Yeah, I'd be willing to say that you're right. I think that um, Nidalee, Twisted Fate, and Renekton are very interesting, uh, aggressive picks 
uh, looking for early game domination, looking mm -hmm. to win the game fast, which is similar to what we saw last week. So uh, UNC might have a similar game plan. We see picks like Ziggs and Lulu getting banned out. So Lulu is just really strong with Jinx. Jinx's ability to attack fast paired with uh, picks just allows Jinx to shred through teams. Same idea with Kog'Maw, Lulu. But so we will see that gone. Ziggs probably being banned out from Rami Baba, maybe trying to yeah. avoid that uh, all towers gone at 10 minutes. The, maybe get rid of that. The complete map control when we saw the Ziggs come out, the Ziggs support, and honestly, a, a lot of lane dominance from that Ziggs too. I mean, the yeah. Q pokes and stuff, it, it's really hard to dodge. And again, immobile ADC oh, with Jinx, it, it's very good ban. And then again, more enchanters getting banned out, just stuff to make it harder for the Jinx to free hit and get those resets and get the uh, get excited. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe a Karma paired with the Jinx. I think Karma is still a really good enchanter that's left up right now. Um, we got. You see oh. Leona actually, so we're looking for engage now instead of opting to buff up the Jinx Viego Gwen. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have liked to see Karma, but I guess we have the Zeri hover. I'm pretty sure that's still disabled for this week. <laughs> pretty sure that there's a two week limit before it, so a little and bit of a uh, memeing with the yeah. hover, but uh, I'm surprised that we didn't see Karma. I think that Karma really enables this team composition to mm -hmm. run forward, and it provides a little bit of extra tankiness to Viego and Gwen who mm -hmm. don't fully have it themselves. Speaking of tankiness, and also Nidalee set up, we see Nautilus on the bot side for UNC. So we're looking really hard for long range uh -huh. uh, spears, long range poke. And at six, Nautilus has a knock up. We see another Zeri hover again, probably not gonna lock that in. Yep. But um, the focus of this team composition is gonna be Nidalee. Mm -hmm. Nidalee's gonna look to get some quick camps and then look for that. So uh, I guess I was wrong. Maybe Zeri is not disabled right now. I believe I, there is usually a two week. I was pretty sure it was two weeks, but I guess we'll see what happens. They'll I'll tell you what, if I, if we get a Zeri in this game, I will be very excited because I've seen Zeri do some pretty crazy stuff. All right. Uh, okay, it's so enabled. we are getting a Zeri and I am very excited. And then there goes the Corky, Corky mid. which um, of course is just a very, very good pick right now. Just very strong. You know, you got the package, mm -hmm. the the absolute insane damage from the um, empowered bombs. It's it's pretty strong and you know, they're nerfing it at patch, but maybe not as much as they should be. <laughs> um, they got the uh, package nerf coming through, but right now I believe we are not playing on the patch. So we, the package timing will be um, around six minutes, I believe. I think that they're pushing it to 10 minutes and then yep. five minutes in between packages, which is one minute more than packages right now and two minutes more than first package. Uh -huh. So it's definitely going to change his ability to shift the game. Uh, recently, ever since those smite changes where smite was able to get to 900 after five smites, mm -hmm. I think that the focus has changed to Rift Herald more than Dragon. Uh -huh. First Dragon typically is kind of going down after that Rift Herald sometimes. And uh, I think that that's based on the amount of gold that Rift Herald gives, the ability to break those tower plates. And just Dragon is more of a coin flip because what if you have 450 and that's just not enough mm -hmm. damage to secure it right when their jungler runs in on you. Something I do want to mention in this draft, and I'm not sure what the thought behind it was, I want to know why Leona was fourth pick when the mid laner was picked first in the composition. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, East Tennessee might have missed an opportunity to punish a little bit harder, picking the Corky as late as they did. I think that they might have been able to just show that and say, we'll just take a high scaling mid. We'll just take the raw power and we'll hide another pick, allow for another counter pick. And Leona coming out fourth, then it allowed Rami to counter pick both in the bot lane. Yep. They got to they got to see Jinx and Leona and pick their Zeri and Nautilus into them. I'm interested why that was the thought process. Probably uh maybe just a little bit of wanting to hide the corky to see what happens maybe mm -hmm. being afraid of rami taking the leona for himself but i i do think that this team is highly focused around nidalee highly focused around tf roams and maybe seeing zeri pop off in the late game yeah. once she's able to get all of her items stacked up i i definitely agree i think um especially nidalee uh nearly renekton combo is just known for their dives early um they can go and Especially even the Gwen, who's usually a pretty defensive and safe 
pick, you can uh, really punish her if you just get in range and get in range of her W. And um, their burst combo is pretty insane. So I agree. I think the Nidalee is very, very important here. So uh, I think we are going to a very quick break and we will be back with you shortly. Do not click away. And we are so excited to be seeing a Zeri, I think. Um, so please stay with us and join us. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We are jumping into game here. UNC versus East Tennessee State University. This is CLOL week two. Um, UNC is just coming off of a big win in their first week, and we have a very, very exciting game coming in store for you with the Zeri pick. We have the Nidalee. It's going to be aggressive, and we already see an aggressive level one play coming in from UNC. Yeah, aggressive level one is really needed. We're gonna see if this Gwen gets caught out by Rami's big massive hook. <laughs> Looks like she's gonna Ewa, he's gonna Rami's flash. Gonna flash over. There is nothing that this Gwen is gonna be able to do. She has no flash, and the first blood goes through for Renekton. This is exactly what you need to be doing for the UNC comp. You know, we were just talking about it, and UNC's comp is made to win early and to win the game very quickly. So these little leads and especially on Renekton I think is very very important and this is exactly the excitement we were looking for. Sweet, simple and back to base with the Gwen. We saw a traditional five point 
ETSU, they don't have a composition that wants to go in at all, really. Jinx, Corky, they're not doing much level 1. Gwen, 2. Viego, not even so much. And Leona, her power comes most at level 2. So UNC really capitalizing on the ability to punish uh, the lack of a response. Just flashing over the wall, being able to take down Gwen and starting with a nice lead in the early game. Yeah, and I'm going to be interested to see where these junglers go. You already see um, Nidalee's going to be starting bot side, of course going to be pathing up, most likely to, again, punish the, the Gwen. No flash, takes TP and Ignite. Um, and on the other side, we have 50 Cal Taco starting on the top side, going to be pathing bot, maybe looking to punish, punish Rami for blowing that flash early. But again, um, it looks like it's a classic game of UNC wanting to be aggressive, play early, and already you see CP um, walking to the bot side jungle, so maybe we see an early play again. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to invade. There does seem to be a ward on the blue buff, so we might see the laners rotate to punish him, or we might see Viego seed his blue buff. Actually, we, ever, we do see everyone walking up at this point. I was thinking that we would just see a vertical jungle, but... It looks like he's just going to steal this buff pretty much for free. Yeah, Rami hex flash over. It's not going to be a good look for ETSU. They do not have the numbers um, in that bot side jungle. So, yeah, Steepy just gets that blue buff for free. You see 50 Cal Taco walking into their blue side, and a flash comes in. Gold card. The Q misses from the Nidalee, so not going to be much follow up. And again, more aggression. You see the Renekton going into 50 Cal Taco, chunking him down below health. The flash away from the Viego, the Q coming through from Nidalee, and that play is now over. It seems like 50 Cal Taco did pick up Steepy's blue buff, but again, these aggressive plays are going to be favoring UNC, and it's really important that they pull these off and turn it into something more and more and just really choke them out in these early stages. Yeah, the main thing I saw there was that bot lane and mid pressure were pulled off as they looked to go to that blue buff. Oh, oh we have an early look here. Hex flash over the wall. The Q lands a stun card over the top. Ignite, and he is going to die. And again, bot lane, Posh is getting jumped on, but is going to just E over the wall. I think um, that Zeri is a very slippery champion. Also has a cleanse, had to burn that, but still has flash up. But. All good things coming in from UNC, really aggressive plays, Rami moving around the map very, very well, using that Hex Flash to get that mid gank off, and now all sums burned for a majority of ETSU, another thing that UNC can capitalize on. Yeah, anyone who walk, watched the Mac talk this week should have expected that from Rami. He <laughs> announced his play. I want to flash over that Raptor wall, and I want to hit a hook. Uh -huh. And he called a shot. He did it. As we see another play in the bot lane. Leona jumping onto Zeri. Has no cleanse, but Rami is back. Goes for the hook. Gets trapped up by Jinx. You see 50 Cal Taco walking around. Diego looking for something here. Rami, no flash. Jinx getting down with the machine gun and the rocket going to pick him up in the end maybe a little bit too aggressive without knowing where 50 cal taco was going in on that getting trapped up and rami just getting a little punished for the aggression yeah 50 cal taco wasn't there the play maybe doesn't happen mm -hmm. but we see nidalee hovering the spot side uh making sure that there's no dive that happens onto the Zeri. Zeri, despite her ability to get out with E, is still very weak at this point. So if she's sitting under a tower, she's very susceptible to being dove. But we do see that there is a bit of a gold lead coming out for UNC. We'll UNC see if that advances. has had a bit of a renaissance. And UNC see Kerasi getting jumped on again mid over that Raptor pit. We were just talking about it. It seems like a very big point of contention for these supports to be ganking over these Raptor pits. But nothing's going to transpire. Kerasi is going to just go back to laning. Um, yeah, there's no gold card for the side of ETSU, so it makes those ganks a little bit harder. When Rami hex flash over, he was able to get the extra CC from Twisted Fate's gold card. Uh, when Leona comes over, a little bit less. Kersey's able to just kind of walk out and throw some cards at them as they walk away. We see that bot lane's getting their crash, so we'll see a back coming from Gala. I want to see if we see the Triforce build that's been coming out, or maybe if he thinks that he has his own build. It, we do see Sheen and Dagger, so it looks like he is going to be looking for Triforce. A little yep. bit more Bruiser build, a little bit more health coming into him. 
And I, again, I'm really excited. And here we see some aggression again, looking to punish that Gwen for taking no flash, which is usually the play. You know, Gwen is very slippery, has the E dash and the um, W to reduce or not even take any damage from outside. So uh, it's a great rune set that a lot of people take, but can be very punishable. And it looks like. Uh, Steepy and Renekton were looking top, but just gonna go back to his jungle and maybe keep farming up. Yeah, we saw it punished in the early game where she had no flash, but at this point, we see a play in bot lane, so never mind. TP, gold card goes on on Leona, the hook follow up. Posh is gonna flash forward actually to get the damage off, and Kersey's gonna pick up the kill. Very good play. Those TF ultis, the very first TF ulti of the game is almost always the most important, and it's great to see that they're punishing the flashless Leona and being able to make a big play off of it and getting a little bit of gold into the Twisted Fate. We would love to see those kills onto somebody, maybe the Nidalee, to again snowball their lanes. We talked about how important the Nidalee was, or, or even the Zeri. Um, Zeri can be definitely a big problem. Um, but looks like it's just going to be a dragon secure for UNC. Again, accelerating the game. REC a, almost a 2k gold lead. And again, things are just looking good for UNC right now. Yeah, we love to sing his praises on this broadcast. And I'm going to do it again right now. Rami Baba knew his hex flash timer. His flash came up seconds after he got that hex flash off. Wow. So he knew that he was sitting with a very small window to make that play before he had to use his actual flash. And the ability to get that hex flash off, again, the gold card coming through from Kersey with the destiny expended to teleport him down to the bot lane. These are the high octane plays that we're expecting. We're gonna expect, uh, we can see that Twisted Fate has his destiny coming back at about half the cooldown. And half the cooldown, I expect that we see another play. Maybe to top lane this time, but that Gwen with the ability to immune the gold card is just much more difficult to gank than the flashless Leona. And at this point, the flashless Jinx. Um, if Rami is able to hit six before destiny comes through, then we might be able to see a force of her cleanse into another CC mm -hmm. that would allow the Jinx to fall. And one thing I think is interesting, just looking at this laning phase, I know I've seen, um, I, I know I've seen, I know who, uh, <laughs> walking around the map and getting some roams off, and I've also seen Rami getting roams off. But it looks like for a majority of the time, you know, Posh right now is sitting at level seven, where both of ETS used bot laners are sitting at level five. This could be attributed to the amount of ganks. That, I mean, getting that kill off, you might be losing some gold, but obviously there's something going on there where whether it be roam timers or what it, whatever it may be, there's definitely an advantage already stacking up in bot lane, which again, UNC needs to push these advantages as much as they can in this early 15, 20 minute span. Yeah, I think Posh definitely feels very safe with his E, his ability to hang onto that wall and get out if things get scary, as I mean, he's going to do right there. Yeah, look how aggressive he's playing right now against this Leona, Jinx. I mean, it's really... Uh, and I think he accidentally he ult. ultied there. Um, maybe... I think he thought Viego was closer, and if Viego was closer, that was his opportunity to get away, maybe get that extra bit of damage and slip slide away with his move speed that'll get through the stacking autos, but maybe an oversight. We can see more than he can. We'll give it to him for uh, this one. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. We'll say that it was a very tactical play, but it looks like he, 50 Cal Taco is actually looking for a gank off of that. Cleanse is gonna be burned. A lot of damage going out into Posh, and Viego's gonna pick up that kill. Um, this is a great play for 50 Cal Taco. Again, I was just talking about it seems like Rami's making a lot of plays around the map, moving around very well, and now they are just punishing that by playing the 3D1 bot lane and going for that dive. But now it looks like we're seeing a possible dive coming out top lane. They don't know if Corky's there. Corky package over the top. Jagon almost killed off of that package. Again, does a lot of damage, but maybe this dive from UNC is going to be thwarted. Yeah, I give credit to Corky there. Mids had matching back timers, so Twisted Fate and Corky were off the map at the same time. But Corky was able to get his package with that eight minute timer. He had just been sitting on it, waiting for his chance. And I think that with the play that they were making bot lane, ETSU that is, uh, they predicted that UNC might make a counter play on the top side. So Corky took his extra move speed, waddled on up to top lane, and now he's able to TP back with about a plate of damage. 
not gonna lose two plates, so not too bad. Stops the top lane play. Good play to Corky there. Yeah. I think overall this is um, actually a really good play by ETSU, and I think this actually diminishes a lot of what UNC has built up so far. But here we see the Destiny Gate over 250 Kaltaka, the unstoppable used, and the hook's going to miss because of the flash, but Flash did have to be burned from the Viego. You know, the Unstoppable does stop him from being CC'd, so the gold card did not connect, which would have been a kill with the follow-up from the hook. But honestly, just a good play from 50 Cal Taco. And again, like I was saying, I think right now it's a little scary for UNC because we really need to be seeing this gold lead be stretched further and further in this 15-20 minute span. And ETSU is doing a great job denying it. Um, even after those first couple falters of getting kills with the Destiny Gate, the early kill top lane, it seems like ETSU is actually beginning to stabilize. Yeah, I think that they're stabilizing this play, and I wanted to see more of a gold lead from UNC at this point. I think that uh, with how aggressive their comp is, 1.5k gold isn't really what you want to see, especially mm -hmm. when you're looking at uh, Twisted Fate's free gold. He is up CS, so... Shoutouts to him, shoutouts to the leads that they're getting throughout XP in the bot lane, but uh, or CS in the top lane, but I don't think that this is the gold lead that UNC was expecting to have by this point in the game. Yep. And I think um, a lot of that is attributed to that bot play that just happened there. Um, we actually got a uh, look and saw that Posh was being zoned off a lot of XP and a lot of gold. Um, when there was four people top from UNC, but you know we see that ETSU picks up the dragon off of the cross map play from UNC, where they are taking down the first tower of the game with that herald and putting a little bit more gold into the Renekton in Italy. Yeah, we see that that's probably a little bit of what happens when your support leaves. Rami finally ticking six. Uh, Leona's at seven. Jinx is caught up to be eight. However. Uh, I would say that Zeri's probably closer to nine, um, but there's a lot of damage on that tower, and this is kind of what happens when your Nautilus just abandons you. Uh, mm. Rami had to tell Posh goodbye for a while, and that kind of is coming back to bite them a little bit. We see that Gale Force is completed on Elo Vertigo, and we're not yet seeing the Triforce. He might have gold for it. He might be waiting to get an extra long sword or finish boots as a Oh, and here we go, fight into UNC's jungle. It looks like it might be already over. As soon as it starts, the E over the, from the Leona goes on to Steppy, but nothing transpires. The dominance was popped from Jay Young, but no aggression there. I think ETSU was very smart making that play to back off and not to push it any further, even though the Leona ulti was burned. Again, ETSU is looking to scale, UNC is looking to dominate early, and those plays are just very dangerous for ETSU. Yeah, oh, Rami's flashing in the bot lane. Here we go, a hook onto the Jinx. He gets the knockup, he gets the ulti across. Jinx very low, forced the Gale Force out. The TP from Gwen over the top. The ulti destroying Steppy and Posh in the back line, but actually the turn back from Renekton, the TP. Gwen does go down in the end of it. Kerosene with the blue card does not get the stun onto Leona, but overall, a one for zero in favor of UNC. It looked a little dangerous, but in the end, a good trade for UNC. Yeah, Senior Ice hugged by about four members of UNC. They allowed the Leona, the Jinx to leave. We want Gwen. We want our 300 gold. We've committed so much, and they're committing a lot to get away. Let's take what we can get, and let's not greed for more. I respect the play, and I respect the ability to say, let's take as much as we can without giving a lot back. Mm -hmm. uh, only using Flash from Rami, not using any other Flashes on their team, means that they're going to have Flashes when these next more pivotal fights come up. Uh, second Herald is something that gets memed about a lot, uh, especially in the pro circuit. So we'll see if there's a fight around there when that comes up. Uh, we might see something happen around second dragon about or third dragon in about two minutes. We do see Infernal Soul for this match. So damage is going up throughout the rest of this game. Uh, UNC, very aggressive composition. They want to have a lot of damage, but so does Jinx. Elo Vertigo with the Jinx oh. in the flash. And Leona ulti coming over, gets the root onto Renekton. The ulti pop, but it, I mean, it's five against one. Jay Young getting almost out, gets the reset for Viego. He flashes forward, gets a stun onto Steppy. 
gonna get the reset again. Steppy overstepping to Rami, now getting jumped on. These Viego resets are just coming in over top of UNC and just demolishing them in that fight. Yeah, if your Viego knows how to play those top laners, it can be especially damaging. Knowing how to play Renekton, use those double dashes to get the stun, and then into a Heartbreaker is so much damage. Uh, we see that uh, Matches AL has TP'd bot lane to make sure that that tower doesn't go down, but we saw 5 top, and 5 top is going to be much more than our funny croc can mm -hmm. handle. Um, UNC kind of tried to bail him out. Uh, it resulted in Rami Baba having to burn his flash, Steep having to burn his flash, and hurt a lot. That's not the play that they want to see. In and now Kerasi overstepping bot lane. He burns a flash, but again, ETSU deciding to back up. Could have maybe possibly gone a little bit farther, but playing it very safe here and just trying to take the man mana advantages that they can get like they did in top lane. Yeah, I think that this next dragon might be the turning point in the game. If UNC loses this, I think it might be curtains for them. It's looking very dangerous for them if they're not able to push out all of the uh, advantages they can get. Mm -hmm. We didn't see as many Nidalee Spears off of Renekton stuns as we were expecting to. Gwen is able to stop that very easily with her W. And the same thing kind of happened. We saw good teleports from Kersey. We saw Destiny coming out across the map, and it resulted in some good plays, but just not as much as they need. And I think this is exactly what they need to be doing. The hook lands onto Gwen. Gwen going to pop the ulti. Going to destroy Rami Baba. Jaehyung over the, with the ulti going to be doing a lot of damage. But the Corky Rockets are just being too much. They don't have the front line with the Rami anymore. And 50 Cal Taco going to be picking up. Kerasi gets the shutdown. Gold card comes over top with the resets. The damage is just going to be too much for UNC. And he dies to the Red Smite. 50 Cal Taco on a rampage, even looking for Steppy, and I I don't know. It's looking really, really tough for UNC right now. I don't know if they're picking the wrong fights, if they didn't get the early advantages that they wanted, but at this point, the fact that ETSU is ahead is very, very grim. I respect the willingness to force the question, to force that fight mid lane and try to get what they can, but it was a trade one for one before Corky was able to free hit. Corky was able to just shoot off rocket after rocket. Viego was able to get his Heartbreaker resets when he showed up, and that resulted in third dragon going over to ETSU. They now have two, which is going to push the soul count into their favor. Might be very bad for UNC because now even the gold lead that they were expecting to have is gone. They're down five kills. UNC needs ETSU to mess up at this point. There needs to be a mistake to happen that UNC can punish, or else this game is probably just over. Corky scaling, Jinx scaling, Viego resets and his ability to just steal your items, steal your health, and also Gwen scaling to an extent, her ability to sit in the side lane. This looks very scary for UNC. Yeah, it looks like right now they don't have a lot of options to deal with this Gwen. I think this is a very big attributor to ETSU winning these fights because they just cannot burst somebody like they want to. They have the gold cart. They have the damage from the Nidalee. They have the point and click stun from the Renekton and it looks like they might be looking on a play bot possibly onto this Gwen but she's just going to be backing up. But again, they just cannot burst anybody down and this is exactly what this team comp needs to be doing with what they had as a gold lead Maybe 10 minutes ago, they just could not capitalize. And here we see the Hex Flash over the, the wall for Leona. The dodge is for Kerasi, dodging absolutely everything, but the damage is just going to come through with the Jinx, with the Corky Rockets, and it's just going to be too much. Kerasi's going to be picked off there. Great dodges, but in the end, just not enough. At that point when he was up that far, the only thing Kersey could have done is sniffed out the gank and used Destiny to teleport back, but oh, a fight wow. breaking mid without Kersey. A 4v5 it looks like, but the unstoppable coming in for 50 Tile Taco. Jinx gets hooked off to the side, Posh kills off Leona. Gwen is on their backline, gets a TP flank, going to be using those needles left and right. Damage looks about even, the 3v4 right now. Jinx is untouched, Corky valks forward. The reset for Viego, and it looks like it's going to be another reset city for this Viego. And I just can't imagine how UNC is going to cut him back into this game. Yeah, it's looking like this is about the point of no return, barring a major mistake from ETSU. I think that they did what they needed to do. They played very respectfully in the early game. 
uh, even when Rami was all over the map, I know who was spending his time with Elo Vertigo saying, I'm not going to let uh, Zeri take over. It looks like Kersey's trying to uh, pitch down what he can, but he but too is going to fall. But he's just get picked off uh, by the Corky. Again, the Corky damage. He's probably got a lot of gold in his pocket right now. Going to get the reset off with the Baron. And we're looking at his items right now. He has the mirror mana finished off. He has the... He has the Ludens now, and again, you can see he just got a huge back off. He gets the team at. It's going to be a lot of damage coming in from these rockets. And again, I don't know if UNC has the, the gold right now to burst down these carries for the side of ETSU. 5 to 15 is the score line in this game, and the item advantage is certainly to ETSU. I don't want to hear what UNC columns sound like right now, but I hope that I can see them in the next game uh, respond to this and figure out a way. But what I really want to see right now is I want to see them understand where their win condition is, and I want them to pull themselves back into this game mm. so far. It looks very dark, but it's not over yet, and there could be a chance to make a play. And here we see a play happening in the red side jungle of UNC. Jayung gets picked off a little bit of damage. The ulti does come through for Rami, but it looks like it actually did not connect and will get the reset on the timer. So he still has that option all of the ulti up for the Nautilus. Um, looking for vision here, but gets stunned by the Heartbreaker. Keep it talk 50 cal taco going to be damaging up Rami. The front line getting absolutely destroyed, but keep 50 cal taco getting damage put back on top of him. But the Jinx rockets are coming in and it's just like outranging UNC's comp right now. It, just very, very difficult for them to be able to do any damage. The Gale Force forward for the Jinx, the Flash forward with the Leona ulti, and the excited Jinx going to be running through the team with the package over the top. They have the Baron, they have a wave mid. I'm wondering if they're going to look for an end here. Yeah, what started as a misstep by Rami almost turned into a pick on a Viego. There were five people there next to ETSU's four, but... Um, we saw the Corky TP matches AL, was able to recognize, I can get my package and I can come in and swing this fight entirely. Mm -hmm. Jinx Rockets were able to free hit with all of her extra range and the Rapid Fire Cannon, giving her a little bit more range when she needed it. Uh, the Leona flashing forward, I know who were able to get the slow off and it's just looking harder and harder for UNC as the game's going on. Yep, it, it looks very, very grim. We'll say it again. Maybe a desperate play here from Kerasi. Flashes forward onto the Corky, gets the gold card, gets the stun, gets the root, gets the hook from Rami Bamba. Shut down, going over to Steppy with the Nidalee. Very good play here. Gets the other spear onto Senior Ice. Will they be able to get any more off of it? The gold card pulled out for Kerasi, no flash. He did make that play onto the Corky with it. But again, no game is absolutely over. Looking at the comps, it's very difficult for UNC to get back into this game. Just looking at pure items, you see the, the matchup bot lane. You see Jinx with about 12, is that 12K gold? That's 12K gold. <laughs> Against Posh's roughly 8K. And again, we said at the beginning of the game, um, UNC wants to be ahead. Oh, obviously, they're not. Very tough spot for UNC. Not impossible for them to come back, but just looking at the items, it is just so difficult to look at this game with a <laughs> with a smile right now. Yeah, it's definitely looking rough. Unfortunately, Nidalee did get that uh, big shutdown on the Corky. I think that at this point in the game, Nidalee has sort of outserved her purpose. Mm -hmm. She can't really out jungle at this point anymore. She's looking for spears, but uh, it's not really where he wanted it. I think that they would have wanted it more on Zeri, yep. maybe getting her uh, pushed up an item and a half. But and here we go. Rami's going to be looking for vision again. 50 Cal Taco just picking them off. Posh actually getting a lot of good damage off, but the reset is there for the Viego. Gold card coming in from Kerasi does not find a stun, and 50 Cal Taco is going to be walking out of that one with a free kill over onto Rami Baba. Posh doing what, is, what he can, but the sheer gold lead at this point is just allowing for so much armor to be on the side of ETSU. And as we mentioned earlier, we're on Infernal Rift. There are two drakes on the side of ETSU. So all of that range that they're having is getting amplified. 
by so much more damage. Extra ability power, extra attack damage. If they take soul, the game will probably end shortly afterwards. But it looks like right now they're gonna siege this top tower, look to break it open a little bit more. As we see everyone here, except for the top laners, top laners focusing bot lane, living on the island that they're used to. Of course, I mean, top laners are usually just hanging out by themselves, but here we go, the ulti onto 50 Cal Taco. Heresy getting burnt very, very low just by those Jinx Rockets and the Corky Rockets over top. The hook misses from Rami Baba and the ulti being popped by the Gwen Senior Ice, but it looks like there won't be much follow-up. But ETSU getting kind of pincered here. They're using the Blast Hound to get over. Leona is going to use the Hex Flash to join his team. And right now, I don't know if we're posturing for much more from ETSU. Rami Baba was possibly looking for a hook to follow up. Again, the further this game goes, the worse it is for UNC. So... It's good to see them pressing further a little bit more, but ETSU doing a great job being able to play back and play out of these fights. Yeah, Rami Baba was dancing with the devil there. Uh, Kersey was forced to back and go clear out that bot lane that was pushing into their tower, which meant that he was threatening a 4v5. Um, nothing did break out. All the backs come out, and it looks like ETSU is going to have proper Baron set up. They're going to be able to get there faster, and it looks like they might be able to threaten it. Gwen is going to head back bot lane. So Jay Gung, Senior Ice, no more TPs. Uh, UNC focusing on the side of bot lane as Baron's up. I'm interested to see if they think they need to set up for Soul this quickly. Oh, flash over from Rami. Gets the stun card over onto 50 Cal Taco. They are going all out for this Viego. He's forced to use the ulti. I know who with an amazing Leona ulti. Gets the hook out onto the Corky. The spear does go wide. Pasha is in the back, free hitting, but again, this item difference from the Jinx is just too much. Flash stun from Jae Young onto the Jinx, gets the flash away and the cleanse, but it's just too much damage from this Jinx. She's untouched, she gets excited with her passive, and uh, now I could definitely see this threatening the game. Yeah, so much speed. Super Mega Death Rocket coming in, landing, securing a kill, giving her the speed that she needed to catch up to Posh as he ran away. But the excitement is too high. The teleport is coming out. This is going to be the end of this game. I don't think UNC has any chance of defending this one. As the inhibitor falls, Kersey stands with a lone red card, <laughs> looking to clear as much of the wave as he can. Oh. As they back off, ETSU is going to play safe. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, we can either get Baron or Soul at this point. Probably going to opt for the Soul as that's the permanent buff that they most covet. Nidalee probably not even going to be able to get there in time. As we see, the dragon is spawning and is being shredded very quickly with a setup to catch out Rami Baba if he chooses to walk in. Yeah, Corky is sitting there close with the package and the ulti does come over onto Rami. He's stunned up, rooted, survives for a while. Corky package comes through on top of all of UNC. Everyone's just getting bursted down. Rami goes, Steffi goes, Posh goes, Jay Young goes, and I know I've said it, it might sound like a broken record, but it's just, this game is doomed for UNC. Yeah, Corky's going to walk in as they search on the top side to maybe get that ace, but it's over. The second Corky gets his Infernal Soul, the game's going to end. Mm -hmm. He's able to poke so far with those rockets. Gwen taking a large amount of damage and even opting to burn the Zhonyas. There is using Destiny, just trying not to die. Keep his KDA line, looking at 2-4-3, as the Nexus will fall in the first game of this best of three series. Yeah, I mean, a pretty dominant game, honestly, from ETSU. I think UNC had some very good early plays and really was able to capitalize on flash timers, on the bot lane duo, on making plays top with the Nidalee, pulling him around, and the Destiny gate was used very, very efficiently. But it just wasn't enough. They just did not get enough done. And again, we said it at the very beginning, that comp is made to win in the first 15, 20 minutes. The gold lead was never enough where they were at a point where they were just going to be able to outright steamroll over ETSU. So if they're going to run that comp again, which I don't see them doing, honestly, um, they need to be pushing that advantage so much further, so much faster. I hope we don't see that comp again because the problem with it was that there was no escape route. Mm. There was no option to pivot into anything else if there wasn't a breakout in the early game. Nidalee getting her first kill around the 20-minute mark 
is never what you want to see. If you have her with a Renekton stun, a gold card, a Nautilus, she needs to be further ahead. Mm. She had around 4 or 5 KP near the end of the game, and we needed to see more. And I think that hopefully, looking at the next game, we're going to understand that, and we're going to say we need to reshift our focus. Maybe we underestimated the opposing team a little bit, but we need to change up our draft, uh, draft a little bit less aggressive, mm -hmm. a little bit less red, and go into what our Lord and Savior LS would call some sinner picks, uh, or no, uh, some holy picks. Uh, we don't, we want to shy away from the sinner. We want to shy away from the sinner. I, I heard you mentioning the, uh, the red aggressive play style that uh, UNC drafted towards, and again, it just obviously did not work out. Um, I think uh, we can actually pull up the damage charts here and look, and obviously there is an issue here. <laughs> we got one. We got one. Yeah. Nautilus out damaged the Leona. There you go. We got one. So we got one, but this isn't what you want to be seeing. It's what you kind of expect to see with how the early game went, and it's not to say that uh, UNC was without good plays. Mm. Uh, Rami flashing over the Raptor Pit comes to mind, but... When you look at this damage, it really tells the tale of the game. Jinx and Corky were allowed to just get too far ahead, and once they did that, they were able to use their massive range uh, advantage to just completely blow apart UNC's team. Yeah, and I mean, Jinx and Corky are just known for their scaling, so it's very easy for them to get to that point. So honestly, again, hopefully maybe we pivot away from this draft, but if we were to see it again... And I'll ask you the same thing. What do they want to do? I wouldn't mind if they say, okay, we need to punish a lane and we need to snowball through a lane. I feel like they actually spread their love and like the Rami roams and the TPs and the TF Destiny gates. Um, I believe we got one bot, we got one top, we got plays here, we got plays there, which you love to see. But I feel like the way that they win those games is they need to shut somebody down and make their game unplayable. Yeah, I think that if we're going with the option where we need to steamroll a lane, the option that I want to see is I want to see a Caitlyn in the bot lane maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe see either the TF or the Renekton. I think that having TF and Renekton uh, kind of pinned UNC to a point where mm -hmm. if Renekton doesn't get ahead, where does the damage come from? Exactly. Uh, Zeri, um has been made fun of a lot because sometimes she's shooting a pea shooter and yeah. if she's not getting very far ahead where's the damage on unc's composition come from mm -hmm. i want to see some kind of escape route and maybe that means that they pick a higher scaling bot laner maybe they get the jinx this time or maybe they pick a more aggressive bot laner as i said with the caitlin and they try to blow open towers mm -hmm. maybe we see a change in the mid lane, a uh, change from TF over to Galio and offer a little bit more tankiness to provide whoever the ADC is with the ability to hit the opposing team. I think that if we see Renekton Nidalee again, the other three champions on the team need to change. There needs to be some way that we can get out if Renekton Nidalee is mm -hmm. not able to get ahead and Gwen needs to be gone if we see Renekton Nidalee. I agree. Uh, Gwen's ability to just completely nullify whatever Nidalee wants to do if the spear isn't long range, it's not doing damage. Yep. So I think that we need to see a change, whether it's in the top side of the map, whether it's in the bot side of the map, something has to change. This draft can't get picked again against the same team. I agree. I wanted to just bring this up too. Zeri pick. I mean, Zeri pick. I was very excited to see the Zeri pick, um, but did not really amount to much this game. I don't know if it was from that, bot play that I know um, kind of snowballed ETS's you lead a little bit um, where Zeri was denied a lot of farm but even with the level advantage and it seemed like she was doing so well for a long time um, just never got to a point where it felt like she was being impactful um, where uh, Posh was able to pilot her in a way um, or whether it's just the champion it's just it was really tough to see um, the Zeri seem like a pea shooter for a majority of the game. Yeah, I will say in this scenario, I don't think it was a Zeri problem. I think it was a Jinx problem. As you said, there was mm -hmm. that play where Zeri was able to be dove and Jinx was able to get ahead. She was able to free hit on that tower, take down some plates, get some extra gold. And once she was able to do that, she was able to reach that Jinx threshold. Yep. Once Jinx hits her one, two items, she starts to become a character that can really dominate the game. And you need to be ahead of Jinx. If you're not ahead of Jinx, you're already so far behind just because of how weak she is early compared to how strong strong she is late um i think that posh did a very good job of 1v2ing in the lane 
And I think that once he got that uh, snowball started rolling, I just don't think there was a way to bail out and to stop it because there was so much able for Jinx. She had Leona to peel her. She had her own mm. traps. She had Viego that was hovering her a lot and able to just put apart anything that UNC was looking to do on the bot side. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Jinx was definitely a problem. So obviously we are going to look for something different from UNC in this draft. And game two is looking like we're going to be starting and draft is underway. You see the Vex band coming through. I think, again, similar for what ETSU was doing at the beginning of game one bands. And again, I would love to see the Corky band, the Jinx band, or maybe threatening the trade of they take Corky, we take Jinx, and there's the Corky band in the first rotation from UNC. Yeah, I want to see more respectful bans this time. I think last time we banned for comfort and we gave the opportunity to just allow for such hard scaling with Corky Jinx. Mm -hmm. I would love to see, now that Corky's been banned, I'd love to see if maybe we allow the Jinx and we punish it mm -hmm. or we allow some other heavy pick because something has to be taken off, whether it's that Lux from last game or the Shen ban that I believe UNC uh -huh. also did. Something has to go away now that we've banned Corky. And... We see that Lux has been banned again. A lot of focus is coming to this mid lane. Mm. Um, I want to see that bot lane is getting punished because it looks like we're not going to focus any bans towards bot lane, mm. which is fine. But you have to put Jinx behind. And if we're going to allow Jinx to get picked, we need to be able to put it down. I would be very surprised if we don't see the Jinx pick coming in f be um, first pick for ETSU. Um, just such a strong pick right now. Maybe the Victor. The Victor is another very, very good pick just in this meta. Being able to scale, there's the Victor. Now, hopefully, I would love to see UNC playing that trade. They get the Victor. We get the Jinx. Um, these are just picks that are just overall very, very strong and can obviously dominate a game just like we saw. Out. We see the Jinx hover, and I really hope that this gets locked in. It has so much more potential than what we saw from Zeri last game, and I think that it might be what UNC needs to turn the tide. This is the escape option if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. If Jinx hits level 16, if she gets her three items, she's going to be able to make a heavy impact in the game regardless of what else is happening, as long as she has a sturdy front line in mm -hmm. front of her. So we're probably going to see a support pick, maybe like the Nautilus, maybe something like a Leona, even if it's not now, down the line, something that can help to keep her alive. Or maybe we'll see something like a Galio, whether it's probably support now as we see Oriana get locked up, but we're seeing things that are focusing on keeping Jinx alive. Oriana is able to provide the shield, which provides extra armor and magic resist. And once we're able to do that, we're able to keep Jinx hitting, keep damage outputting. We're able to get big shockwave plays. I'm liking UNC's draft so much more than what I saw last game. Already taking a big pivot away from the early aggression, obviously with the Jinx pick. Um, ETSU going with the comfort of the Viego on 50 Cal Taco made a huge impact last game. Obviously knows how to play many, many champions. Was able to pick up different... Um, different champions with his passive resets and use them to a great effectiveness in team fights. And also we see the Leona again picked for I know who. Yeah, we see Leona picked, which means that I want to see something that can counter Leona on this pick before we allow them to take away any bans. I think that jungle might be safer to hold on to and allow them mm. to ban out than support would be. As we do see that our screen has frozen up, so we don't know what the pick is, but I can hear that we're moving into the next set of bands. Mm -hmm. um, but as we'll keep talking about the Leona, something that I hope to see is maybe something like a Poppy. Poppy can shut down that engage. Okay, we see Thresh. Thresh. And that's Very fine. Very good pick. I, I like that. We can E off the Leona engage. Mm -hmm. We can hook off the Leona engage. We can do something to keep her from getting in. Something that I would have wanted to see if we didn't see Oriana was maybe something like a Janna, mm -hmm. because Janna can buff up the Jinx and also peel for her at the same time. But since we see the Oriana, I do like that we're seeing a little bit more focus on holding down the enemy team and protecting our ADC. Yeah, I, I love the Thresh pick. I think it's a very, very good pick. Very, very strong into Leona. And just as far as bans go, love to see that the Gwen is going to be banned out from UNC. Very oppressive. Very good top laner. Very hard to punish. Shen also getting banned out. Getting away those globals. TP changes. Um, and now we are going into the last ban for ETSU. I'm a little curious on what they could possibly ban. Maybe a jungler ban here because... 
Jarvin's going to be banned. Again, another tool to keep things off of Jinx. Um, so Jarvin is a very good ban here, and now we are looking to round out UNC's comp. I'm wondering if we might see the return of the Hecarim pick. I know that Steep he does like it, and based off the bans, getting rid of Jarvan, who's a powerful, tanky fighter type of character, we do see Hecarim hovered. I really like this pick. He has the ability to be the Oriana Shockwave delivery system, and that's something... Oh, <laughs> as you excited as you were. As excited as I was, it's the same idea. Yep. He can jump yep. in to a big group of people, and he can, once the ball has holding everyone in with the command shockwave, he's able to spread them all back out mm. and get them off of him so that he's allowed to survive for a little bit longer. I like the pick, and it pairs a little bit with the Thresh to keep things a little bit tanky. Top lane, I want to see a bit of a fighter, and we see that Set gets picked. So maybe we can see the Renekton again, Renekton trying to break that sh mm. Set shield once he starts punching, or maybe we can see something else, maybe a full-on tank. We see Orn to just give 3,000 gold to his team throughout upgrades. I'm interested to see what comes out. Caitlyn in the bot lane. One of the answers to Jinx, because she's able to put Jinx so far behind. Hovering I'd be very Zeri? surprised if we see the Zeri. Ziggs is an interesting pick. Um, Ziggs, obviously, now we are not playing very bot-sided for the side of ETSU. So maybe we'll see um, I Know Who moving around the map a little bit more this game. Um, they could be playing through the Victor. Victor is a very good lane to be picking um, to excel the game and to get strong early to be able to get to that scaling point. And the Irelia getting picked up against the set for Jay Young. I've seen Jay Young's Irelia. I think it's very, very strong. Um, a pretty decent matchup into the set and a very, a very good pick here. I. Would have loved to see a little bit more of a tanky front line mm. to really just call the game for Jinx, um, to play practically for Jinx. I think Xin Zhao is a great pick here, honestly, over the Hecarim, um, because with the Crescent Guard, he's able to negate a lot of damage coming in from ETSU because of the range damage from the Victor, from the Ziggs, completely negates it. Um, but overall, how are you feeling about Draft? I like both drafts. I'm a little bit surprised that we saw the Ziggs. I think that it might be coming out as a bit of comfort. Mm. I might might have liked the Caitlyn Hover a bit more. I agree. Paired with the Leona, the ability to chain Leona's EQ into a trap gives her so much domination that they can use to put down the Jinx early. Mm -hmm. I think that with Ziggs, you do see the Q poke, but he's going to have to use that a bit more on the wave. He's not really able to take those long extended fights because he has three abilities and then he's more or less done. So I'm I'm fine seeing the Ziggs pick. I think that it's acceptable. It'll scale in the bot lane. It'll become very strong into the mid game, but I would have liked to see Caitlyn to maybe punish that Jinx a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. As far as UNC's draft goes, I would have liked to see a little bit of a tankier uh, top laner, as you were saying. But we do see three pseudo-tank kind of champions that will still be able to keep everyone off the Jinx, which mm -hmm. is the main goal. If it's not putting a health bar in front of her, it's dispersing someone else in another way. Yep. So I do like what we saw with the UNC draft much nicer than what we saw last game. And we do see that the focus is probably going to be on bot lane this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this top lane matchup. I think Jay Young on the Irelia, you can always make some very interesting flashy plays. And again, with the Ziggs pick in the bot lane, it looks like maybe it might be a bit of a split map game where we'll be paying a lot of focus to the Jinx for UNC and maybe a little bit more focus for the Victor and 50 Cal Taco in the top side. So I believe we are going to go to a quick break. Do not click away. We will be right back with UNC versus ETSU. See you a little week two.
Welcome back, everybody, to game number two, UNC versus ETSU. This is week two of CLOL. This is a best of three, and we are hoping for a win from UNC after seeing that tough loss after game one. Um, looks like we are going with pretty standard five points here, and I don't know. Oh, wow. It's not in the bush. It is not in the bush. Um, a little bit of a unlucky ward there coming from I know who. Don't know if that will cost him a lot. Uh, Kersey actually walking up. Yep, we see that is not in the bush. Kersey giving a little dance in the bush. Um, something that we get to see and enjoy. But I don't know, Ryan, walk me through kind of what you're thinking this early game is going to look like for these two teams. I'll walk you through the early game. But first, I'm going to walk you through those beautiful ads we saw while you were all sitting there. Please feel free to come to our watch party tomorrow at 3.30. We'll watch LCS. Or come to our weekly tonight. We're going to play some casual games in the Carolina Gaming Arena starting at 7. Hopefully this doesn't go too long so that I can get there in time. <laughs> but uh, please come to both those events. Should be a great time. What I'm expecting to see as we look into this game now is I'm expecting to see what happens in this mid lane matchup. Uh, Victor Oriana is something that we see a lot because there's a lot of ability to just poke with the long range. So a lot of pros are willing to take this matchup on either side. Uh, I think that the junglers will probably, probably opt for more traditional pathing, <laughs> not really looking for that uh, vertical pathing that we saw last game mm -hmm. because you don't really have the nidalee able to jump over walls and do her interesting pathing like she was last game. You see a Zin Zhao who can do some of that, but it's also a lot of his damage. I think he's going to try to look a little bit safer. Uh, the top lane, I want to see Irelia get a lead. I want to see her be able to beat set so that in the late game, he's a stun and nothing else. I don't want him to get too far ahead. And bot lane, I want to see if Jinx can maybe get a lead. I think that'll probably go even as trading happens in the top lane. Uh, probably fine for Irelia. She's able to queue up off the wave. Mm -hmm. She's fine. She'll be able to get that health back, but I want to see that the Jinx is able to punish the Ziggs pick because Ziggs starts even slower than she does. And in terms of tower damage and stuff like that, he gets even bigger than she does. So mm -hmm. I want to see that the Jinx, uh, the Jinx in the early game is able to just do a little bit of work onto that Ziggs and get a lead. Yeah, and um, it looks pretty decent right now. Of course, these early levels are going to be played out with limited availability of spells. But right now for UNC, they're getting the shove in into every single one of their lanes and getting this early prio. Maybe we can see some proactive plays coming in from Steppy with his prio, but right now looking mid, we see Fitikao Taco maybe looking for an early gank onto Kerasi. He does cue the Heartbreaker, goes for the channel, but does not get the stun off. Kerasi going to be able to walk away from that one and we'll, looks like we're just going to go right back to laning. This lane is pushing back to Kerasi, so that's in a good spot. Lane's going to be pushing back everywhere across the map for UNC and Steppy is on his Krugs going to be pit, going to be going towards that topside scuttle but pretty standard stuff right now Viego not able to connect with the spectral maw to get that stun but it doesn't really matter because that was that little window where he had where he could look for a gank mm -hmm. and just not really lose much it's not like uh Xin Zhao is gonna walk into his bot side and just punish him off of that mid gank It'll put him a little bit behind. We can see that he's about 2 CS behind as Xin Zhao is going to clear out this crab. We'll see 24 to 24. Uh, dink, 28 to 24. So one camp lead for Xin Zhao as he looks top lane himself. And the gang coming off onto, onto Senior Ice. He gets the W shield. Another gang coming out down top. First blood goes over to Irelia, but a trade kill goes over to Viego onto Rami Baba. The flash was not burned. Maybe just a little bit of missight from Rami. Didn't see him. The lane gank from 50 Cal Taco is very, very um, tough to spot out. Um, but overall, it looks like top lane had to burn his flash and his TP. Jae Young did burn the flash, but overall... And even trade across the board. I'd be willing to predict what we saw is that Leona hit an E there and that she was able to chain her stun into Zig's W, mm, yeah. which was able to send Rami back into the team to the point where it wasn't worth it for him to flash and that he was dead in the water yeah. as Viego sliced and diced him, auto Q auto for a big chunk of damage. We see a generally neutral trade, top side, bot side, junglers reacting to each other, jungle being the dance that it is. I think that both junglers played that well and both laners maybe needed to react to it, but 
it's nothing that you can fully blame them for mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to take those trades where it's just not worth the flash, and I completely agree. Um, the split map game is, of course, unfolding. It looks like the ideas for these teams is what we were talking about. They are looking to shut down the bot lane of the Jinx while trying to accelerate the top lane of the Irelia. And the stun going on to Kerasi, don't know if the Spectrum Mall will follow up. Just looks like they're clearing vision in this bot side. Um, bot lane are getting a little bit of prio for the side of ETSU and some simple trading coming in just in every single lane. Dragon actually going over to the side of ETSU, going to get the reset. Don't know if they'll be able to capitalize, but should just be Dragon over to ETSU. Yeah, this is one of the interesting times where we see the Dragon is coming down before... Oh, oh 6 is breaking out! Jayong not level 6 here, does get the stun over to Senior Eyes. Does not get level 6, killing all the minions he can, gets his full stack, but Senior Ice is not going to be able to get the kill. Just good movement here from Jay Young. Was fishing for that level 6, might have gone for the all-in play, but did not get it off of the minions. Now we are looking top again, gets a stun off, no ulti, no flash for Senior Ice. This should just be a kill, gets the big W damage over onto Jay Young, but not enough. This is a huge, huge kill for Jay Young. You see that wave is crashing in, there's going to be a lot of XP missed from Senior Ice, and a big lead now for this top side of UNC. Yeah, this is the lead that Irelia is looking for, especially as Set has to pay his Irelia tax and buy that Bramble Vest. Mm. He's now looking probably to go into his Mythic, as we can see that he has the Longsword, but uh, Jaegung off of his back is going to get much closer to his Mythic. He already has the Phage. He'll probably have around 800, 900 gold to back with, so he's getting another component probably towards uh, Gore Drinker that I think that we might see... Actually, we see some armor coming out, so maybe just respect. Maybe that builds in. I'm not exactly sure if that goes into any mythics. Um, I believe he will be building the Gore Drinker here. I am not sure. I believe that is the meta pick most of the time for the Irelias. Um, so that should be pretty standard. And one thing I want to talk about is I think this way of trading across the map is going to be huge for UNC. I think getting the lead for Irelia is much more punishing than punishing the Jinx in the bot lane. Getting her behind is going to be not as important as getting Irelia ahead because mm. Jinx, in 20 minutes, she's going to be Jinx. She's going to be Jinx. She's going to be Jinx. So right now, I think um, UNC playing the map very well, but 50 Cal Taco looking top lane, gets the Heartbreaker stun, gets a follow-up stun from the set, gets ultied back, Jaehyung looks like he's going to be dead here from 50 Cal Taco. You know, that Viego gank is very dangerous and just showing the threat right there. A little bit of trading coming here in the mid lane too, but not much is going to come out of it. The ulti was burned from Victor, but again, just a punishing gank from 50 Cal Taco. Yeah, it looks like ults will be traded in the mid and the top lane. Uh, we did see that Viego was able to get that kill, and he was able to just secure it down. Oh, possibly a lead. dive going on mid. Starts off with the Crescent Guard, knocks him back, forces the flash out of Victor. Not any follow-up from Kerasi, but honestly, a very good trade. Here, Posh with the rocket, sending it mid. Will it land? Oh, not enough. So close. And now we see a trade going on into the bot lane. Robbie Baba forced to back off, forced to use the flash, walks out, but gets killed by I Know Who. Now we see Posh getting jumped on, does have the flash, does have the cleanse, able to just walk out. But a lot of aggression across the map turning out to be advantageous for ETSU with the kill onto Robbie Baba. Does go over to the Leona, but again, advantages for T ETSU. We see that, that with that extra kill, the gold lead is about even. Slight edge to UNC coming through their CS numbers. Everyone is up except for that Viego at this point. And that is kind of the point where they want to be. Obviously, everyone wants to be ahead of the other team. <laughs> That's just kind of how the game works. Yes. But if they have to be even, they're willing to take it with this composition. Last composition, when they were even, it was damning. This game, it's looking much better for them to just be even at this point in the game. Now we see the Herald coming down, Bada TP coming in. I wonder if that's 
Oriana or Jaehyung. Double it's TP both. actually. Posh is forced way back. Very low HP. Does not have the flash. Does get killed by 50 cal taco. But going to be a trade. He's way too deep. Does get the soul, but not enough. The trade kill does come over. But right now, two TPs burned. Kerosy and Jaehyung had to burn that. And they still get the turret in the end. Overall, not a very good trade. ETSU again coming out on top. Yeah, we see that the power of the Ziggs pick is his ability to take those towers. And we see that the tower just came down pretty quickly. Uh, Ten minutes as a fight breaks out mid lane. Oriana stunned gets stunned ult. up. Alt over the top from Victor. Nothing's going to transpire there, but... Steppy walking in here. Gets a little bit of vision. Sees Leona... A, little, a lot of jumping back and forth, a lot of teetering on plays, but no fight is just breaking out. Gold lead is about 600 for ETSU. It looks like there's going to be a bigger fight for this next dragon. And with the wave pushing in, I prefer ETSU's positioning, even though Steepy is already between ETSU and the dragon. Viego has the ability to go invisible, and he's able to hit his stun doesn't really pan out into much more but we might see if something happens set does have tp where he can tp to mid tower so irelia is respecting him and starting to run down at this point already set's probably going to look to push in but it looks like etsu is just going to seed this dragon <laughs> very close with the zigs ulti i think i saw one hp it it was very, very close. I was very scared for a second. I don't know if Sevi had smite up. It does do the 900 damage. He has the five smite stacks. But um, overall, it's great for UNC. They pick up the dragon um, uncontested. Yeah, uh, this is probably the, the, the dragon that they want even more. I think that the damage matters a little bit more than that slight bit of armor that ETSU will get because ETSU already isn't going to be building terribly much armor we'll probably see some come out since there are three big threats on unc that are ad focused as we see rami, rami gets a hook but he gets caught with a heartbreaker with the stun over top 50 cal taco going to be getting those resets already a dangerous fight for unc but they take it anyway steppy with the crescent guard gonna get ulti back from the set low hearth health bars for on 50 cal taco and now set is stuck in the middle of three of UNC and going to get picked off in the end. A good play from UNC to fix that fight. It looked a little doom in the beginning with 50 Cal Taco getting that reset. But, you know, as soon as he picks up somebody like Arami or on the Thresh, he's going to be losing actually a lot of stats that he would have had if he stayed as the Viego. A little bit of trading coming out bot lane between the Victor and the Oriana. Both ulties use Shockwave coming on to... Victor, Cursing a lot of solo. damage, flashes a Q from Victor, they are still fighting, flash from Kersey, and the solo kill, a beautiful play by Kersey, uses the shockwave, uses everything, and just knows that he has enough damage, good flashes coming in from both players, Matches was able to dodge a little bit of the damage, but just wasn't enough in the end. They are looking at even items. I really think it came down to having that Merc Treads on Kerasi over the Tier 1 boots from matches. Yeah, at that point, Kersey had about 30 extra CS and one kill ahead. And now at this point, still being that far ahead, uh, Kersey is so much further ahead based on the way that his champion works. Victor's two levels down, and he's missing a lot of his hex core stacks. We mm -hmm. see the Unleashed Teleports are coming out as we hit the 14-minute mark, but... I really am excited to see that Kersey is getting this lead this game. Uh, Twisted Fate from the last game, not a champion that you can see that lead as much as uh, as this character, where he's seeing Oriana Victor, a matchup that can go either way, but now that it's gone his way, he's going to be further ahead for pretty much most of the game, barring a situation where he dies two or three times in a row without much retribution. And right now we're seeing... A 3v2 possibly kicking off. Jaehyung does get the stun off to 50 Cal Taco, and Crescent Guard did have to be used by Steppy, but a fight that was not worth taking. It was a 3v2. Rami was moving up, but just nothing transpiring too far. 50 Cal Taco looks like he's going to be caught here. Rami with the stun. He does get the 
Lantern pulls over Jay Young. A little bit of damage, almost killing 50 Cal Taco. Does get the double Q, and the kill's going to go over to Rami in the end. Hook lands on to Senior Ice, and it looks like on the other side of the map, there's more fighting. Kerosene gets killed by matches. It looks like Rami's Ignite burned down that Viego to the very last tick, but the interesting thing that happened was he looked and thought about taking an auto attack just to secure that kill, but he didn't. And as Irelia was walking up, she was able to Q to him, and it actually ended up giving her an escape route. Jay Gung able to live. Really I well know who played, very weak. But I know who going in with about 1 HP onto the half health posh one will he die yes in the end jayung with a tp lance a double stun onto elo vertigo elo vertigo going down here too just a great tp from jayung gonna be able to pick up those two kills a beautiful stun by him too and right now unc with about a 1k gold lead looking pretty good Jae Gong truly did have a flawless duet there. He <laughs> got exactly what he needed, and this is the play that puts UNC ahead in the game. Irelia is finally able to make the gap that she wants against Set. Set, a uh, very safe champion. He doesn't feel great right now, but he has so much CC, and he still does have a large amount of power with that Haymaker punch. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Irelia is able to get these two kills, push herself further ahead of him, just really is what they needed to see. I think that that play falls onto I Know Who for... He thought he had the opportunity, but he was way too weak to try to be pushing that. Gave over a triumph stack off of his kill, and it allowed UNC to push their lead in this game. Still about that 1k gold lead, but it looks like their positioning is much better. Yep, and Dragon is just spawning here. They are going to play this Dance of Vision. UNC getting choked out a little bit, having to posture in these chokeholds, which is very dangerous for the Ziggs. The Zigs. Irelia has the flank, but it's being spotted out. Uh, ETSU is giving their space to go and catch Irelia, and it's allowing UT UNC to take their chance mm -hmm. to get into this dragon pit. No damage is being done to the dragon. This is the cloud dragon. It's going to attack faster. It's going to deal more damage. As Rami's, Rami's all the way off to the side. Going to get picked out by 50 Cal Taco. This might be the cue to start the fight. The Leona ulti gets off onto Kerasi. He has no flash for a couple seconds. The command shockwave... Oh my gosh, Jayo with a huge ulti over the entire team of ETSU. That flank that was started from the very beginning of this dance going to be able to clear all of ETSU. Fiddy Cal Taco tried to get the resets, but it just was not enough. An amazing flank from Jay Young carrying that fight. What an emotional roller coaster we saw in that fight. Something that we might have to mention is that Viego got his pick onto Thresh, which means that UNC lost their ability to fully engage with that hook. But what it did is when he claimed Thresh, he did lose some damage, and I think he probably took some extra HP uh, from UNC while he was Thresh. Uh, a gigantic shockwave coming off from Kersey. He hit, hit a three-man. He chunked out 25% of three people's HP bars. Uh, Kersey was the big player that match, but the flank from Jay Gung set up, even seen out, but it didn't matter. He was able to just throw out his ultimate and he just carved through the fight. I think that those two kills, if he doesn't have those two kills mid, this play doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of that a fight win for UNC can be attributed to that shockwave. Huge play by Kerasi, huge play by Jay Young, getting a huge group of ETSU with both the shockwave, with the Irelia ulti, and a big swing in tempo for UNC. You know, the both these teams want to scale, but... The team that's ahead in the scaling is going to be stronger again, obviously. Um, and hopefully soon we can see Jinx maybe being even a big threat in these fights. Looking at the gold lead, we see two and a half thousand in the top. Never mind, Rami's uh, getting a pick. Onto, I know who gets stunned up by Jay Young and just an easy pickup for UNC here. Like sometimes, you know, the support's have to make those plays for vision. Um, there's a lot of times where they will be choked out of vision and need to walk into dark zones and face check and Rami being able to capitalize with the hook and Jay Young and Steppy following up, they are going to be able to get the second Herald off this. Good punish by Rami leading into that second Herald. I can get back to the gold lead at this point. I realize about two and a half thousand above set. We see that set doesn't even have his first item yet. He probably would if he didn't have to pay uh, the Bramble Tax, but if he didn't pay that Bramble Tax, I really is even further ahead mm. at this point. So a very respectful pick that does end up putting him behind, but 
being 0-4 compared to 5-2-7, and 7, it's going to make for a large amount of gold difference into the favor of Jagong. We saw that... Uh, wait, a play's the happening. The ulti from I Know Who onto Rami, trying to thwart them off of this Herald and these towers. Jagong does teleport in, and that was a five-man stack on these turrets with the Herald. They're going to get two turrets. The counter TP comes in for matches, but it's just too late. UNC is going to be able to walk out, and they just get two turrets for free. Yeah, I don't know if the TPs were needed there. We saw two TPs used from UNC. I think that it was a deterrent, and it allowed them to get that second charge in the second tower, but I'm not sure if maybe that could have just happened, or maybe they could have just settled for the charge and not getting the tower. Two TPs do come out, and we see a third TP burned, one for ETSU. So we will see that ETSU has a giant TP advantage. They have their set, they have their zigs, who's went this whole game without a second summoner, just needing <laughs> TP to get back into lane. Um, so, gold swing for UNC. We're up to 5k now. Uh, those two towers definitely pushing it a little bit further to them, but Baron's going to be the next objective that we're fighting over. And it looks like ETSU is fighting for their topside vision, and maybe to try to take this tower so that they can open up the waves a little bit, push a little bit further, and threaten Baron even that little bit harder. With those TPs burned from Jayon, and Kersey does, Kersey does not have his TP. This is looking just a man of man advantage for ETSU in this top side so they're going to be able to go ahead and get this turret the trade turret does come in bot lane you know I, I really like this and I really want to see this more throughout this game be especially with the Irelia set matchup I want to see Jay Young splitting favorably into the set because that matchup with these items is going to be a win for Jay Young every single time and at one point it's going to be very difficult for Senior Ice to even stop him off these turrets when he's pushing. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this Gore Drinker is going to pan out for Set. It looks like he wants to be the person who's in the middle of everyone, but it, will it matter when he gets that extra health is the question. Will UNC feel the need to respond and maybe buy some, uh, some Grievous Wounds to deal with Diego and Set's healing? We don't know at this point. We might not see it. We see that Victor has opted to get that Oblivion Orb uh, to just punish the two Gore Drinkers that are on the side of UFC as we do continue to look. It looks like instead Cloud Dragon is going to be the focus. Nothing really panned out of that top side. No one felt the need to force a Baron play. And so we are going to... Oh, oh wait, a Baron wow. play is being forced. It was spotted out though. ETSU going for a risky Baron play, trying to flip the Dragon playing the trade, but it was spotted out on a ward, so UNC will be able to stop that. And now they will have vision control of this bot side of U ETSU's red and should be a free dragon for UNC with all that vision control. Yeah. Match is not even walking towards the dragon right now. It might just be ETSU giving this. Yeah, forcing that play on Baron and being spotted out meant that they had to completely seed anything on the bot side of the map. And once all of that's seeded, I had to pause just in case something happened. It looks like yeah, it's still I know who just walking in very dangerous spots does throw the ulti. The solar flare does not land onto anybody. Rami Baba doing a very good job zoning everybody off, getting reestablishing vision control in this Baron area. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this converted into Wow, here we go. Actually, they are starting the Baron. I don't know if this is necessary. Maybe they feel that they're strong enough. And with those choke ultis, like the Orianna Ball, they will be able to really zone off ETSU. But again, this Baron call makes me very nervous. The hook goes wide for Rami, but the flay does land onto I Know Who. The bomb from Ziggs does land onto a majority of UNC, and that will be the call to push them away. Hook does land onto Set, though. Steppy landing the wind becomes lightning but nothing transpiring just this dance of vision back and forth the dance of controlling the barren area it's very very delicate and you know it can be tipped off of a fight in like one hook one solar flare one play yeah unc is up two dragons so i think that what was happening there is they weren't looking to threaten baron at all i think that they were looking to force a teleport mm -hmm. and they did end up getting set to teleport onto that top wave and try to look for a flank solar flare onto rami forced to use the flash away tp coming in from kerasi the rocket coming over matches force a flash tp now coming in from jay young flash four from steppy goes pick off the victor el vertigo is 
Very low HP off to the side. Steffi getting picked off. Two-sided fight here. Reset coming in from 50 Cal Taco. Does get the Zin Zhao. Gets the pick onto the Jinx. There's not a lot of damage coming in from UNC now. It's all up to Irelia and Kerasi here. The Shockwave does get onto Senior Ice. Getting stunned up. Huge damage coming onto Rami Baba with a W. But in the end, a 3 for 2 trade favor for UNC. Favoring UNC, they do have to expend the teleport in order to make that play happen. I think that what we saw was when Ziggs was getting focused on the backside of UNC's fight, uh, CP was still going in, zoning off the rest of their team, and it looks like he might have got a little bit overzealous, not getting mm -hmm. the chance to grab that lantern, although it was thrown out. Uh, I do think that they like the fight overall. Overall, they're getting more gold. Uh, I didn't see if there were any shutdowns that were given over, and even if there were, it's still a good gold lead. 4,000 as we're looking. Two minutes to Dragon. Baron's still alive. Looks like Rami's going to try to secure some vision. He'll find out that there's a control ward on the Baron as we see 50 Cal Taco just lurking around in his mist. Yep, very scary on that Viego. Does have the Divine Sunder and the Steric Gauge. 7 3 and 1 very threatening champion and it seems like in a lot of these fights um, once he gets a reset he does know how to play uh, a lot of these UNC champions and is able to use them to extreme effectiveness but you know again I was talking about this before I really want to see more I don't know if it's macro play or what it is but I want to see Jay Young in a side lane in these matchups I also really would love to see UNC maybe break this top turret because um, right now, that's a lot of vision denied in that top side area around the Baron Pit just because that top turret's there. Maybe switching Kerasi with the Irelia would just be ad advantageous for UNC, but the Solar Flare does not land. They do not get this catch onto Steppy. Maybe they look for a fight here. Jaehyung has no TP. He's top side. The Shockwave lands on a three in the back line. Kerasi picks off at Elo Vertigo. Robbie Baba forced into the Zanya's W onto. The Rami does miss, go wide, ulti over the top, on to Kerasi, but he's forced into a Zanyas too, no damage, and two for a zero for UNC, winning a 4v5. Yeah, this should be a Baron threat at this point. I don't know if it will uh, lead to a Baron, but something that we can look at from that fight is that Rami looked like he got picked, but he had the stopwatch. Rami loves taking stopwatch, and we can see that this uh, cloth armor is coming out. I'm pretty sure that he's going to be building into Zanyas because uh, Rami just loves building Zanyas on these engaged supports. He's able to get in, he's able to make space, and he's able to stay alive longer. And it was the difference that he needed in this case. He was able to go down within 5% of his HP, and he was still able to loot from the fight, all because of that stopwatch. So a good bait from him to get four people onto him as Kersey is able to pick apart the back wave of his, uh, his command shockwave. Command shockwave coming back online, Super Mega Death Rocket still online for Jinx. So we're seeing a lot of ultimates at what will be the Cloud Soul fight where UNC is looking to take it. A flash ulti coming in from Jay Young onto the flashless Ziggs. This should just be a free kill for UNC. Yeah, free kill for UNC. The killer instinct coming out from Jay Gung with no Kaisa in the game. But we will see that now we're going to look to push in this bot tower. And now that Ziggs is gone, it's so much harder for ETSU to even threaten to take this dragon. I mean, this should just be soul right now for UNC. I, I do not see Zin ETSU soloing it. contesting. And Zin Zhao is soloing dragon. So this should be soul for UNC. What does... Now, what does... Um, what does Cloud Soul do for UNC here? What, what do you think it... it is providing for them. So Cloud Soul recently did get changed. Um, it's no longer just the ultimate ability haste that it used to be. I believe that the individual dragons were changed to be extra move speed. So everyone on UNC is walking just that little bit extra faster. I think they're walking with about an extra uh, set of normal boots on their mm -hmm. shoes while they're out of combat. And that's enough to get them forward to get the engage. Now, now that they have their soul, they're getting a large chunk of move speed when they're putting out their ultimate. Rami hitting a hook over the wall. Going in onto I 50 Cal Taco, but he is just going to be able to use those ultis so well, dodging so much CC, dodges the shockwave, is able to escape. 50 Cal Taco has been using his ultimate so well these past two games, being able to dodge a lot of CC. And here we see a TP coming in for Kerasi, going to thwart the mid 
push from ETSU, a little aggressive in his posturing, keeps moving up, just testing ETSU to just do something here. I don't know if a fight will transpire here, but it looks like a lot of people are going to be backing up. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is so good from UNC. We want this matchup all the time. Jay Young into the set. Jay Young is so far ahead right now. There is no way that the set can do any to anything to him in the side lane. The Irelia set matchup is already a tough one once Irelia gets a bunch of those items. But that is exactly what we want to see. And after all that, we do get the bot lane turret. Would love to see that top lane turret go down very soon. Seems like it's been up for a little too long. But right now, again, we're just doing the classic playing around Vision, playing around this Baron. Who's going to tr pull the trigger? But advantage is coming out of all of this for UNC. Yeah, well, UNC, CUNC has about a 7k gold lead. 4,000 of that is in top lane. Set hasn't even been able to complete his second item. Senior Ice not yet being able to get to what looks like Steric Skate coming through. Jaegung, on the other hand, already has his wits end out, and it looks like... The Shockwave does miss. The movement speed for Viego was a little too much there. Yeah. Able to utilize that Cloud Zone to just walk away, not forced to use the Heartbreaker to get away from... Like, oh, but maybe a re-engage here. Rami lands the hook. The, the Shockwave is not available right now, but they are looking for this fight still. 50 Cal Taco very low on the backside. Jaegung with a flank gets the ulti across onto... Is that matches? Matches goes down. Zix goes down. Leona goes down. This might be a clean wipe for UNC. Four players down for ETSU. They're walking down mid. They might try to end this game. Four to one. They might be able to end this game. Whistle. Rami Baba does fall. He has a secret arm guard, but he didn't get to get that Zonya before, or else he would have surely popped it and went through this fight. Jinx is so excited right now. She's getting so many resets off of all these towers, and it looks like she might just shred through the base. This is going to be end. Yeah, Diego 50 Cal Tokyo cannot do anything about this, and this is going to be game number two going over to UNC if they just hit the Nexus a couple more times. And there it is. A great win from UNC. Very, very clinical play, and a complete, a complete turnaround from game one. Yeah, it was night and day between these two games. It was night and day between these two comps. What we saw was instead of seeing just hyper aggression, really trying to just pound ETSU into the ground, which didn't end up pounding out or panning out, we saw a much more respectable draft composition that has opportunities for early game, opportunities for scaling, and everyone on UNC this game ended up getting ahead, mm -hmm. or at least in some aspect. Um, the scoreline, I believe, was 11 to 24. Uh, more kills over onto the side of UNC, much more gold over the 4,000 gold lead that I mentioned with Irelia on, or Jaegung on the Irelia. And it looks like it was a 32 minute game that UNC was able to take the lead in. 2 1 1 2 5 were the deaths. Rami Baba with the most deaths, but that's what you <laughs> want to see, actually. The support is the least important person once the fight continues to pan on. So if he's getting those critical hooks, which he was, we're fine seeing that he has five deaths because his gold starts to diminish. The amount that he's giving over isn't as much anymore. And Jinx is getting the extra space. Oriana's getting the extra space to just continue the fight, continue the damage, and it panned out. Yeah. UNC drafted much better, and it resulted in a win. I really did it. love UNC's draft that game. Um, I think one really important aspect of the game was that Irelia pick into the set. Um, a little scary at first, because Irelia needs a lead. She 100% needs a lead, or else she cannot do much for the entire game. Um, but they were able to play to that top side and was able to punish the set. And, I mean, we were looking at the damage charts, and it, even though she was... I believe maybe the second to last damage overall. She was just making so much impact in the team fights with the Kerasi, with Kerasi on the Oriana, with the shock waves. They were just be able to pull off so much in those team fights and in those sidelines. Like I was saying, I think that matchup was very one sided and overall just again night and day. Very very good play from UNC, and I'm hoping for something similar like that in Game Three. Jaegung. And Kersey had a lot of beautiful ults that game. Mm -hmm. Vanguard's Edge and Command the Shockwave coming through was just massive team fighting tower. Once you're able to trap them within those blades of the Vanguard's Edge, they get slowed and take damage if they're walking through. And that 
offered at least some opportunities for Oriana to send her ball in there. Mm. Even if she's not shockwaving, she can still use the dissonance and she can still pass the shield around over to Oriana, move the ball around, move the team around. And there was a lot of movement from UNC's uh, not very um, movement oriented comp, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, Irelia able to jump around, but there's still the ball, which is doing most of the movement in those team fights. Uh, Jinx was able to get it her excitement over and over again all those resets once she gets one she's firing so much faster her mo her uh attack speed cap gets exponentially lifted mm -hmm. and she's able to put out so much more damage that one kill in the team fight is what mattered for both teams we saw viego we saw jinx one kill really is pushing the fights in these sides i hear that we're going into draft soon so i want to hear what do you want to see what do you want to see banned um i I'm still fearful of the things that we saw game one coming out from ETSU. So I think things like the Corky, I am hoping to see on this third ban. Unless they are looking, they are blue side, they are first pick, they might be looking to pick it up early. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Corky ban. Um, I think a lot of respect for Jay Young on that Irelia. They see the Irelia getting banned out from ETSU. But I would not be surprised if we see a quirky yeah. so maybe that means that we're going for a quirky game again nowadays you have to play this trade um it looks like they're banning more comfort i'm happy to see the viego ban i think viego has been causing a lot of problems for unc i think it's a very strong pick um i think 50 cal taco knows how to pilot viego very very well but um i'm very interested to see what we might be trading here and a tf ban too Jinx first pick is fine here. We saw how much it did in the last game, and I'm very happy to see it come back because it gives UNC that opportunity to do the high damage. And I like that we're seeing the respect to 50 Cal Taco. The first game, they they got hurt by the Viego, and they said, we can play against this. This is okay for us. The second game, Viego still made the same impact mm -hmm. despite UNC being so much further ahead. So this game, I really appreciate the respect from UNC to say, Viego has to go will allow them to even take Gwen who was uh, the ban that they opted for in the second game mm. and we're going to see maybe a mid lane matchup it might be Victor Corky it might be another Victor Oriana it might be Corky Oriana as we see Rakan get pulled out was hovered in the last game but it looks like there's a lot more aggression coming from the side of ETSU mm -hmm. I, I'm very surprised that we haven't seen a, a Quirky or a Victor in those first two slots. I think the Gwen played an amazing game and was very, very impressive in that first game. Um, with the Jinx pick, you're looking to more play bot side, so there's not going to be a lot of the ganks that she's going to be thwarting in that top side with the Gwen. And Akali gets picked up too, probably going to be put... Possibly in the top lane, possibly in mid. You know, there's a lot of popularity with these new builds for Akali. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it going mid. And an Alistar being hovered here, too. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the Alistar, but I'm pretty sure that it's being chosen so that he can bonk Rakan out of his animation. Uh, he can get rid of Rakan's positioning. And positioning is very important for Rakan because his ultimate relies on being able to touch you. And if you charm the Alistar, you can cleanse it with your ultimate. So him choosing to even bonk maybe through that charm might still be an option. We see that Hecarim is picked and Jarvan is banned. So I'm interested to see how UNC can respond with the jungle pick. As you were saying about Akali, I'm pretty sure we're going to see that go top lane. We did see Jay Gung on it last uh -huh. week with the chem tank Akali variant. Uh, it provides her a lot of stats while still being able to do... Uh, burst damage while still being able to do sustained damage. Akali's just allowed to do so much to that pick. Uh, we see that Corky is getting banned out. I'm surprised that we didn't see Corky or Victor in the first wave of picks. I'm very surprised too. Again, very contested picks. Very, very strong. Very good scaling. Um, I think Corky, honestly, the way that ETSU is picking right now would have slotted in very well. But um, you're right. I mean, with those first three picks from ETSU, it looks like they are going in. <laughs> it looks you have the Hecarim, you have the Rakan, you even have the Gwen. It, it's a very aggressive comp, and I think the Alistar is good, um, can knock people away. And the Jin being hovered here, too. A pretty interesting pick, um, a little bit 
further range. I don't know how much you'll be able to hit in these fights with everyone diving in. Maybe they're trying to create some more space for the Jin, but probably going to be seeing a lot more ultis overall from him. And now we're seeing a Draven hover. Oh, uh, the Jinx was already picked. I got a little excited for a second. Yeah, I was expecting to see Sejuani come out in these picks. UNC needs a front line at this point. Mm -hmm. They're understanding that we're going to be hit, and we're going to be hit hard. Hecker and Rakan, Gwen, all looking to get very close and personal. Uh, Jin, a little bit shorter range of an AD carry, and still doing a very high amount of damage. So I really appreciate the Sejuani pick. UNC now still has their mid laner. I'm interested if they want to blind Orianna, if they want to pick Heimerdinger. <laughs> <laughs> Could go with the Maybe Victor. Annie. Victor's still up. We the see Akshan. Akshan. I don't think that I like Akshan in this composition. Mm. We see that um, Akali is now the sole AP, and I don't think that she's really doing as much damage as we might need to see with the Hecarim and the Rakan and the Gwen. They're all probably going to be picking up some semblance of magic resist. We see Syndra being hovered, Victor being hovered, and I think that Victor's very strong. I probably would have liked to just see Orianna picked again. I, I agree. I, I think Victor doesn't really mesh well into their comp, but again, these picks like the Corky, like the Victor, like the Jinx, nowadays it's almost like you need to pick them. They're, they're just very, very strong, good laners, very punishing once again to the late game. But overall, how are you feeling about drafts? If we're looking at this with what was still open, with all those powerful picks that we were talking about, Corky, Victor, Oriana all getting through the first wave of bans, I'm not sure that I enjoy the way that uh, the draft panned out for either team. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're looking at it now, once all is said and done, I wish that UNC had more AP. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe Akali's going to opt to go for just a full AP, maybe go with the Riftmaker to try to get that extra edge over the chem tank, um, giving her extra HP, because we see that Sejuani and Alistar should be able to carry the, um, the amount of damage that they're needing to sustain for the rest of their team to allow them to continue hitting. Um, Akshan will be walking around, he'll be slithering around in the shadows, uh, trying to find scoundrels and trying to find picks where he can swing in, get a kill, and swing out. So I do think that that's okay with the Jin. but if Jin has any friends around, Akshan probably just dies. And so I'm not sure, it's a very meta pick. It also gets pretty tanky. Um, I've seen a lot of top lane auction where people are buying Randuins, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Wit's end, uh, very good on him. Shield bow, Shield giving bow, him the yeah. extra health. So he's not the squishiest carry. Jinx is still obviously going to be the squishiest person on this team. But I'm not sure if I like the way that Draft panned out to have those two marksmen without much of mm -hmm. an AP uh, being able to damage the Hecarim if Hecarim goes down a tankier path. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And one thing I'm a little concerned about too here looking at UNC's draft is I, I do like the, having the front line of the Alistar, of the Sejuani. Um, but, you know, they have, ETSU has Rakan, Hecarim, has the Gwen, and there's only so much that those two can do. <laughs> um, and when the dive does eventually come out with the Hecarim, with the Rakan ulti, it's very, very dangerous for Posh and Kersey because they will be in the back line waiting to get those picks with the auction, waiting to get the resets and the get excited with the Jinx. So what I really think is going to be interesting is these team fights and the way they pan out because it's looking like it's going to be a lot of Jay Young's Akali diving into the back line, trying to disrupt their damage while... ETSU is doing the same thing to us. And it's just going to be who can disrupt the carries the most. Yeah, we do see that there's less than a minute left on the timer before we can hop into the game. So we are going to go into a quick break. Don't go anywhere as we watch the exciting finale. 1-1 one, one for each team. Let's see who takes home the victory in this week two Seawolf. Very exciting.
welcome to the ending of this big best of three uh, match between UNC and ETSU. Before we jump into the game, we do have a few shout outs. Yep, we um, would love for you guys to check out uh, UNC Esports on Twitter. We have been posting highlights and clips from these games and from a lot of the other UNC Esports stuff to show off, which are very exciting. And if you want to check one more thing for us, if you have a little Prime sub, there's a little button down there where you can check to see if you have a free prime and maybe think about using it on UNC Esports. We are a pretty awesome esports club and it would be great if we got some more subs. Yeah, Nothing's we, wrong with that. We would love to have Jeff Bezos' money as we see that UNC is setting up for what looks like a bit of a variation of a five point. We did see that ETSU was looking uh, to stack on that top bush. Um, they learned from the first game where Gwen was left all on her own. This game, stacking in a bush, uh, we see that Sejuani is looking maybe for a Raptor clear start, which I think is fine. I think that she can clear on her own. ETSU will be getting uh, a leash, which will put them slightly ahead, but I don't know if Sejuani is looking to full clear on her first rocket. I'm not sure if that's exactly what she wants to do. I think that she wants to... Uh, Something that I've heard from friend of the show, Bob Timer. Uh, three camp into gank. That's what you should be doing on Sejuani. It's the correct way to play jungle coming from a challenger top laner. So, we'll I, see if that's the pick. I can definitely appreciate the three camp into a gank, especially into a very volatile top lane. You, the Gwen versus the Akali, I think, will be a very, very aggressive area where two melees will be just trading back and forth. Maybe even in the mid lane, you see a lot of aggression because of the Akshan pick being able to be a really big early game bully, even into the Victor, where Victor's just trying to scale and Akshan's trying to get those ropes off early. And right now, you see UNC pushing for level two, gets the level two off onto ETSU, and just going to be shoving in this wave. But yeah. you can see... Steffi on the on the Sejuani is topside, going to be spotted out by the Gwen pretty early, and Hecarim's just going for a standard full clear. Yeah, this is going to greatly decrease the chances of that three camp into gank. Uh, Gwen and actually, we see a gank coming on mid. The ghost pop from 50 cal taco on the Hecarim gets the phase rush proc. Kerasi has nowhere to go, not going to be burning the flash, and the first blood goes over to 50 cal taco on the Hecarim. A very good gank, a very good look from ETSU. After the Raptors, he just goes mid again. Akshan's looking to get that early pressure, looking to bully. Probably going to be getting a lot of prios, so those ganks are pretty available for 50 cal taco, and he just capitalizes on it. Yeah, Ghost was popped from Hecarim. Flash not returned by Kersey. Um, we do hear the cowbell is clinging. TP sent mid. Got to get back to fix that wave. Um, it's dangerous when you're playing Akshan because with that Hecarim, his spear, his sheer speed run onto you and be in your face. You can't hookshot away once someone is already on you. If you bump into them, it'll stop. So it looks like he was trying to move up the wall. Fight breaks out bot lane. Yep, the stun is going to land onto I Know Who. Ignite goes through a little bit more damage, and they would have gotten the kill. Nothing burned except for the heal from Elo Vertical, Vertigo and the Ignite from Rami Baba. But the shove is going to finish, and we might see a reset for Posh and Rami looking mid off of that. Yeah, good roams from the Alistar with his jungler. The flash in from Rami Baba and the flash counter from Matches. A very good flash and another aggressive play coming in from I Know Who. Blows the flash from Posh. Ignite coming on to Senior Ice. It might be enough. It is ticking, ticking. Hecarim coming up to support Senior, but it's not going to be in time. And the kill going to be traded. 50 Cal Taco does pick it up onto Akali and... Akali, on, Jayong on that Akali is going to pick up Senior Ice. Yeah, nice solo Bolo in the top lane, but Hecarim, his ability to just be everywhere once. Bob and another Bob's fight dead. coming out in bot. Seppi with the gank going to be picking up I Know Who. Flashless, Rami Baba also supporting with a bunch of CC, and we're just seeing action across the board. Yeah, this is the gameplay that I've been wanting to see. And now that we do have two tankier junglers, two fighter type tank junglers, we're seeing what we haven't really been able to see. Uh, Viego, we've seen in the past game. Nidalee, we saw in the first game. 
those champs aren't able to just forego their camps and go for gank after gank after gank. Sejuani doesn't need her camp. Sejuani needs an item and she's alive for the rest of the game. So her willingness to not go for Krugs, not go for her wolves, and just take them at this reset now after she's gotten that kill bot lane is going to push bot lane into the next step. Uh, it's unfortunate Sejuani gets the kill there. You really want it on that Jinx uh, as bot lane. Er I know who goes for the predicted play onto Kerasi, but he's just going to be able to swing on out. And Rami Baba goes for the headbutt pulverize onto matches, but it is just to shove in this wave and a back to even game for ETS Union C. Yeah, I think that um, the top play was meant to distract from the bot play. And it's allowed them to both move their supports into this mid lane, amounting into nothing in total. Zrami moves top Zrami now. looks top. Headbutt Polarize combo going out onto Sinarize. Does get the stun off, but a lot of pressure being applied. Nothing transpiring. Sinarize goes back in. Rami getting taken pretty low. Steepy does have no vision on him. They don't know that he is here. Don't know if they'll go for the dive. Pretty big wave, but Senior Ice is just going to be able to clear that out. Hecarim hovering matches is level 6 to Stevie's level 4. You were talking about this, how Sichuani does not need those camps, but it is a little scary seeing that this advantage is going so far with Hecarim getting the two kills. He has the tier. It looks like he's going for that build where you go tier the goddess, you get the... the the man immune, I believe, mm -hmm. and pump out a lot of damage. Slightly missing the shuriken in the top lane. Um, I do think that what happened was that uh, Hecarim got two kills, and he got that top wave after Gwen had died, mm. and that just pushed his XP to the next level. We see that he's um, he's up there in the CS numbers. Um, Akshan, oh, a gang coming in bot. Is the ulti advantage for 50 Cal Taco using it onto Posh. Posh is in a bad position in between three people, but 50 Cal Taco taken really low. Steppy with the counter gank here. Gets a stun off. The trade kill goes over. I know who gets the kill onto Posh, but it looks like Steppy is just running through ETSU here. Gets the stun, gets the kill onto the Rakan, and Rami Baba takes over onto Elo Vertigo while there was a top, top lane fight going on. But overall, a great play from UNC. Very good hindsight from Steppy to go for this bot lane play. Knows that Hecarim's going to be looking for it here too. And is able to capitalize a great trade for UNC. Yeah, Steepy was either level 5 or just about to ding it at the start of that fight. He's 6 now. So this is really what he wanted. He ended up getting a kill and 2 assists in the bot lane. Uh, we saw that the shutdown on Hecarim went over to Jinx. So that's 500 gold in Posh's pocket. Um, this is what Sejuani needs. Sejuani needs the kills and the assists to accelerate her XP once she sacrifices those extra camps. And we see that uh, there's a couple camp difference that looks like uh, 11, so that's almost three camp difference. But it just doesn't really end up mattering as much when he's one level down with just so much ability to CC even without his level 6 ultimate. Yeah, as, as long as Sejuani's kind of staying even in this matchup, it's so good for her. Um, Hecarim, known very well for being able to clear a lot of camps, very clear very quickly, but Rami Baba with a flash gets the headbutt pulverize onto ELO Vertigo. The stun does come through, the action on ulti coming through here too onto ELO, but it's getting blocked everything from I Know Who and nothing transpires. Heal was forced from ELO Vertigo. I really thought that they made a uh, surefire kill there, but at the end, nothing happens. Match is honest, looking for a little bit of a trade here. Kerasi going back in, does get the proc of his passive, but just pretty basic trading. Hecker may be looking for a topside gank here, but nothing coming out of it. No kills, no nothing. Yeah, we saw the entire come up that's blown into Rakan, and it didn't do any damage. Rakan was full HP. The exhaust. Oh, so the top lane, mid lane swing fight, coming happening. in mid. The flash again to dodge the headbutt pulverite combo. Match is playing that very, very well. But now that cooldown is burned, looking maybe for another play. Posh playing very aggressive without his support here. I know who no mana, but. Very aggressive here from Posh, still stepping up. Does get the one proc of the ulti. 
Posh sends it back, and Elo Vertigo with a snipe onto Posh! He was out alive, just way too overstep from Posh on that Jinx. Did not have Rami there. I know who was out of mana, but everything was enough to kill Posh in the end. Strong just punish. a little bit of a misstep. Strong punish from Elo Vertigo. He saw the Super Mega Death Rocket, which locks you into space for a second while casting. Fight oh, break top lane. Rami with a big roam. Headbutt pulverized, lands onto Senior Ice. No flash on the Jinx. She's looking to turn it around onto Rami. While there's a trade kill going on bot lane, it looks like Elo Vertigo might have overstayed trying to shove in that wave, and Kersey capitalizes on the Akshan. Looks like he forced TP there too, and Posh is just going to pick up this mid wave. But overall, two kills over to UNC. I believe Kersey should get his passive. He won't get the respawn, but I believe that he did uh, get the extra gold that comes from his passive, assuming that he has that ability upgraded. I'm sure he does by this point. He's level 9. Um, so this is very good for UNC. They're getting a top play. They're getting a bot play. Oh, and Kersey overstepping again. It looks like it's just going back and forth in this bot lane. Who's overstepping where? He does dodge the ulti from 50 Cal Taco, but he, Hecarim is just so fast, might be able to chase us down. I know who with the knockup and 50 Cal Taco taking out Kerasi. While there's a mid lane go play going on to Rami Baba with the stun, Posh getting taken very, very low from the victor damage. 50 Cal Taco goes on to Rami Baba. Matches does die at the beginning of the fight. Flash from I know who does pick up Posh, but here comes Jay Young and the rest of UNC. It's turning into a 3v3, but Jay Young just picks up the picks up I know who. This just is, fighting all over. It's very scrappy, but right now it's favoring UNC. This is the high octane gameplay that we really want to see out of a game three. We've seen what both these teams can bring to a, uh, bring to the table, and what we're both dominating games for the winner. This game, we're seeing much closer. We're seeing both teams willing to put everything on the line to get this win. We see that Chemtank was completed on Akali. This is going to be a crucial completion as she's 3-1-0 with 300 shutdown. So a little bit of extra tank uh, will allow her to stay alive and keep that shutdown. We also see that Hecarim is probably also looking for that Chemtank. So we will see uh, some magic assist pushed onto his side. Enough to be nullified by the shoes, but it might get scary a little bit later into the game. As a fight breaks out mid lane again, Rami Baba just willing to put his health bar on the line for uh, stun after stun after knockup after pushback. I really do love the way that Rami's playing. He's playing very, very aggressive and taking almost every single headbutt pulverize he can. Just knowing that his team is around him and UNC just playing the map very, very well, grouping well together. One thing I do want to point out here is the CS difference is unless maybe they are looking for a bot dive. I know who and Elo Vertigo sniff it out and are backing off. It looks like they might just give this dragon to it is spawning now so maybe we can look more into the differences we see posh now coming back a little bit more than when i first mentioned it it has the 79 to 92 cs in the gin um and then there is that difference between the heck room and then there's a fight breaking out jayung has a full completed item over senior eyes and she just he just gets blown up on the gwen there's nothing they can do there just a very easy pickup, but now we see I Know Who jumping in with the ulti onto Kerasi. Kerasi staying alive, has the shield belt completed, does pick up Elo Vertigo, and he picks up Rakan on I Know Who. A very good two for zero. It looked like Kerasi was dead at the beginning of that. It looked like he was picked off, but it just has the shield bow proc, has it already completed, and is able to finish it off, and now matches might be caught out. Has the flash available, Posh getting picked off in the mid lane. Does not have the heal available for him. Might just be getting ran down by the Hecarim. Ulti popped by 50 Cal Taco. The Shuriken does land mid lane onto the Hecarim. He does not follow it up. Jayon does not have the ulti available. There's fighting still going on in the bot lane. Matches forced back. Still has the flash available. Rami might be going for this Hexdorf play. Goes over the wall. Rooted up. Kersey gets locked down. Killed. Way too much aggression. I love it, but too much here from UNC. Rami getting taken out, Posh getting taken out, Heresy getting taken out, and what looked like a great combination of plays just absolutely destroyed and disrupted by DSU. 
Yeah, uh, what started out as an amazing play by Steepy, resulting in that double kill bot lane, ended up into a series of unfortunate events for UNC. Um, four kills to two ends up being the final score when all is said and done, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's really not what UNC wants to see. I think that maybe they got caught up in the moment, they got caught up in the lead, and they dropped the respect for a second, and they were punished for it. Yeah, I think the way that CP is playing right now is great. He's moving around the map very, very well. Again, he's conceding some of these camps. You can see a lot of his camps are up right now, but when he moves around the map and forfeits those, he's making plays. He made the play with Karasi down there in bot. You know, they misjudged the damage that they could do. I know who and Elo Vertico just overstepped a little bit too much and Steepy is able to capitalize. 206 on the Sejuani and again, at the beginning of all of that fighting, I believe Jayon got a solo kill onto the Gwen in the top lane. So, two power picks right now, Steepy and Jayon are turning out to be great and will be scaling further into this game. Yeah, as we mentioned, Sejuani is very willing to seed her camps. We saw um, Jinx taking the crab, we saw Akshan taking the red buff. It looks like this Sejuani is going to be hungry for the rest of the game. Uh, something that I will bring up, because Alan uh, will love to hear it, is I wonder if we'll see Sejuani build the support item this game. Bob Timer, not a big fan of this strategy, but Steepy is not the man who's getting the gold in this game. Right now, Steepy in a little bit of an interesting situation, gets ulti by 50 cal taco, might just get bursted, ulti comes out from Steepy. Posh is in the back line, free firing his rockets, and Jayung looking for the flank. TP comes in from Karasi. Super Mega Death Rocket does go wide onto I Know Who. Rami Baba overstepping a little bit, does get the head by, but Senior Ice does pick up that kill. It's a fight on two fronts. Jayung in the back line doing a lot of damage, but Posh is untouched. He's getting the research. He's getting excited. He's picking up everybody. He picks up 50 Cal Taco. He picks up I Know Who, and the. Passive proc does come in from Kersey. He goes in very, very deep into three people. Will he be able to survive? Shield bow does get proc, but it is not enough. Maybe a little too aggressive. I feel like UNC is doing so many good things, but it's just a little bit too much every once in a while. Just a little bit too much overstepping. Yeah, that was a little too much. We saw a little too much there. Um, we did see the respawn come out on Sejuani, so she will get the faster... Uh, Reaccess to the map. It looks like she is taking that Rift Herald, so she's using her extra seconds well as uh, Kersey is looking to respawn in the next eight seconds. What I want to see from UNC is how they set up for this next dragon. It's coming up in 30 seconds. They will have the Rift Herald. They might opt to drop the Rift Herald into the mid lane and use that extra pressure to open up into the bot lane. But if we can get a look at ETSU's uh, vision, they just have so much. They have two control wards. They have the map completely controlled. They can't mm -hmm. really see what's happening pushing into UNC's jungle, but the river control that they really need, what's really important to them at that point, is what they have. Yeah, and so we see exactly what you're talking about here. Here comes the Rift Herald down into mid lane. It looks like they might try to turn this into mid prio, but 50 Cal Taco on the flank, gets stunned up, rooted up, and just bursts it down by Posh. He gets picked off at the very worst time. Harold's gonna get the charge off in the mid lane, but a beautiful shutdown on that flank from UNC. Looks like they might be able to convert this into a second charge and even threaten this dragon. Yeah, I think that the flank from Hecarim was a great idea, but it was sniffed out. Uh, Jinx was able to get her trapped down. Rami was there, because I, I saw the Glacial Augment come out. It was responded to extremely well by UNC. They took the opportunity to get the pick, and then once they had that, the extra pressure was just pushed forward. What we're seeing from these comps is kind of what we're seeing in the last two games. Even though there's not the very heavy reset uh, character of Vieco, we're still seeing Jinx, who wants to get those kills, wants to get the excitement, and wants to just run at the other team with reckless abandon. Mm. And now we're looking at UNC being in such an amazing spot is going to pick up that dragon. They are going to be on some point here. And just looking at the gold leads, you can see that there's a t almost a 2k gold gap with that Akali versus Gwen. Akali just doing so much this game, being able to threaten that Gwen, being able to threaten that huge side lane presence. And across the board, it's just looking very good for UNC. 
Yeah, we see that there's a three kill difference in the bot lane. Jinx is a little bit further behind because she's got an assist and not kills, which is unfortunate for her. However, she has a zeal component compared to the last Worcester armor penetration component and the pickaxe and the crit poke. So it's not what you want to see. Oh, he's oh and Hecarim getting the jump onto Posh. The follow-up CC from I Know Who on the Rakan going to be enough to take down Posh. The TP's coming in. It looks like it might turn out to be a 4v5. ETSU getting the pick early. Cedar Ice pops the ulti, doing a lot of damage onto Rami Baba. Steffi going in here onto the fight, trying to force them off. The curtain call coming out. Not going to be able to get the angle on Rami or Steffi. Surviving with very small health bars, but overall, this is great for UNC. They're getting that push in top lane. They might get to have to trade these towers in, but not too bad macro play out of UNC. Even though they lose Posh, they lost a lot with those two turrets, but they're getting something back. Yeah, Jin is able to lock down that kill, pushing him up to six. We will see Lord Dominic's regards coming out next time he gets the chance to visit the fountain as they're hunting for Cursey. They smell a scoundrel in the woods, but he is just sneaking away. And he, he might, might be able to get a pick onto Jin here. Jin going down pretty low, forced to use the flash. Don't know if Cursey falls up anymore. It looks like they're just going to back off and now convert that into a little bit more vision control around this barren area. One thing that's pretty interesting that UNC has the decision of, they're starting this Baron, which was not what I was about to mention. This is very interesting. Don't know if this is too forced, but right now, Jid is coming out of base. He's pretty far away. He doesn't have that curtain call. Can't follow up too much. Channeling from Rami Baba. Oh, gets a in. double headbutt pulverize. A huge combo. Hecker and Forced ulti away. Low health miles coming out from ETSU. They are just sprinting them down. UNC is tearing through. Senior Ice gets taken out too, even through the Gwen W, through the Gwen Ulti, the healing, it's not enough. UNC picks off three members of ETSU, or two members of ETSU, forces 50 Cal Talk away, this should be a free bear. Yeah, it's looking like their opportunity to force was there. Uh, Jin was walking back to base, so they saw the chance. Rami Baba never stepped into the pit. He was looking and hunting. He had vision over the wall. He wanted the hex flash, and he saw three people line up. The hex flash is over. Hecarim is forced to use the onslaught of shadows to get away, and that allows uh, Jinx. I believe she flashed over the wall. She very went in. Very aggressive play. Very aggressive play, but a very respectable play. No respect to ETSU on the play to just flash over the wall. He saw so many people low. He shot out so many rockets. We see that the second item is now completed on Jinx and Jin. So there is still a pickaxe advantage, but we see Stopwatch coming back. It looks like he's... Uh, Posh is ready to respond to this Hecarim engage as Kersey jumps in, <laughs> chunking I'm out Hecarim. It doesn't even matter how much armor he has as the Mana Moon Phage Chem Tank are completed. His damage is so high! His hit damage is ridiculous. You saw there, Kersey just being able to chunk out the Hecarim. Actually flashing in, goes for Elo Vertigo, just absolutely disrespecting everyone of ETSU. Gets the Shubo proc, might be able to get another kill, doesn't get the swing reset out, but a huge aggressive play coming in from Kersey and it's just it's just disrespectful play after disrespectful play coming in from UNC and I gotta say I love it. I have to love the respect in this scenario. In the first game, we didn't like to see the disrespect because of the problems that were happening, but with a 5k gold lead and seven kills on your off shot, seeing him swing in and open up the entire blue side jungle for your team to get those wards down, clear out the control wards, push in the bot lane. It might be a good death, honestly, to just swing in, get a kill for free. Who cares? Mm. Your team is taking so much more space because you've pushed them under their towers. I want to see UNC convert that space into something. I think they could maybe group a little bit more with this Baron. It's right now a 4v4 or 4v5 with Jin now coming up here. Rooted here, Steppy. TP coming from Kersey, they don't want to push anything with this Baron, actually. They're looking to convert the Baron into an Ocean Soul as Hebba, Rami goes in again. Hebba pulverized, lands onto two. Rami Baba might be a little caught out here, might be without his team. But Kersey's finishing off the Dragon right now. They might just get Soul while they're fighting on the other front. Rami does go down in the end. Jayung, I know who, pops the ulti, looking for an engage here. A beautiful ulti coming in from Steppy on the Sejuani, completely negates that. Jayung, Jayung the on the backside. Hecarim gets ulted by Kersey. 
Very low health bar on 50 Cal Taco. Jaehyung looking, searching, hunting for this Hecarim. They should find him and get the kill in the end. Steppy going to be queuing over the wall. Gets a slow. Going to be getting the stun, and he should be pick He's getting up picked Kersey. up very soon. He tried to give Kersey the kill, but uh, so 50 Cal Taco opted to walk under tower and just make sure that he dies. He doesn't want to give that gold over to a higher priority target. Rami, as I said in the last game, he does not care about his KDA. He's willing to die for his team, making so much space in that blue side jungle as Kersey is just one-shotting the dragon as he swings around uh -oh. to look at Jin again. Kersey just doing so much damage, swinging in every single time he can. Same thing with Rami. It seems like they're just making aggressive plays, and the, they can. They're so far ahead. They have the soul. They have the gold. They have the advantages. They have the items. They can just play this aggressive, and now they're looking to the spot tur turret. For a long time, Ocean, con Ocean Soul has been considered the best soul in very many comps. It's a one-size-fits-all soul that very rarely you don't want to have on your composition. It's very rare that you'd rather have a different soul than Ocean. What's basically happening is Jinx and Akshan are getting a free Bloodthirster on top of the shield bow that we already see on Akshan. Their survivability just went up so much higher. Jinx hasn't had to spend her stopwatch, so next time Hecarim dives on her, she can stopwatch it. Posh will just live. He'll go back. He'll start hitting again. Hecarim will be in the middle of the team, and Posh can start free hitting to look for excitement. It looks so good for UNC with his position with the Ocean Soul. I think the only way that ETSU is getting back into this game is to getting picks and hoping that... I mean, Matches is level 14 right now. We are hoping that he... I believe he has all of his upgrades at this point. He mo Yes, he definitely has all of his upgrades at this point. But Matches needs to be the one to start saving ETSU here. Um, his damage, of course, going to scale very hard into this late game. The Neosli Rod Rod might be looking for a Rabadons here. Um, maybe with that, they can turn the tide. But right now, it seems like UNC is just playing so, so well. Just playing these fights very well, disengaging when they need to, engaging when they need to, making aggressive plays that ETSU just isn't expecting. And it's all just working out for UNC. And here we see Kersey swinging in once again onto that red buff with, with the... Jin, the ulti does come through. Come up and clears the wave. Rakan looks for a knockup. He's not going to find it. Steppy uh, does get rooted here. I don't know if they're going to look for this pick. Jaehyung is bought. He has the TP. The headbutt does push 50 Cal Taco out to the side, but he is nowhere close to his team. Posh gets a couple free hits in, but right now Jaehyung's just getting a free wave and getting free push. Really good side lane pressure coming in from the Kali. Yeah, Akali still has that TP, so Jaegong is allowed to just sit in the bot lane. He's pulling the pressure. Gwen is forced to move over. Senior Ice sending himself down there to try to match the Akali. We might see another fight down here. Uh, we know that Akali is able to solo kill this Gwen from earlier. We're not sure if she can still do it at this point. Two items, two, three, so it does look heavily in her favor. A fight does seem to be breaking out. Maybe just a little bit of trading, a little bit of dancing. Here's he just walking up, knowing full well that those two are there. Again, with his Ocean Soul, he's able to heal back a lot of HP very, very quickly. 50 Cal Taco taken almost to half, and again, they don't have access to this Ocean Soul. Where is he going to be regening from? He has to stay in these areas to thwart off these chokes, and Baron's up. Maybe UNC looks to do that soon. I believe this is the first game that we've seen this series where the other team didn't get a single dragon. Baron is starting to fall as we see that everyone is heading towards the river. We know what's happening. Headbutt Rami, headbutt. comes out on to 50 Cal Taco. He gets taken out after the ulti, but right now it's split. Posh is in the Baron pit with Steppy. Maybe this is again the trade they're looking for. They're trying to make space so they can secure this Baron. The jungler is down for ETSU. Kerntal does come out, but Jayun just going into three people, picking off Picking off Elo Vertigo out of nowhere. He procced the curtain call. He looked for the steal onto the Baron, but Jaehyung just gets an angle, and there's nothing that ETSU can do. There's three, four members up standing around him, but Akali's just way too strong right now. Look at her items. She's even building Magi's. Once Akali, uh, or once Hecarim falls, sorry, we see that the only hope for ETSU to look at this Baron is to get that fourth shot on the Jin curtain call. But what happened is Rami stands in the way, forces 
uh, Jin to just completely miss the fourth shot and went off into the wilds. And since we know that Jin Elo Vertigo is standing here uh, in place with the curtain call, Jaegung took his opportunity to just dive into the enemy team. We see that he has six Magi stacks, so he's willing to look to just continue snowballing on the enemy team. This is a late time to start a snowball, but <laughs> if he thinks he can do it, we're down to see it. Um, we did see Kersey getting a little bit overzealous in that mid lane. Oh, we see a TP coming out mid. I'm interested to see why that's happening. What do they think they can get off of just picking Kersey? I think they really want to try to get some mid prior, but the fight's going to start out here. Fitka Taco with the ulti over onto Kersey, getting taken very low. I Posh with a kill onto the Rakan. That engage is taken out of the fight, and it looks like Jinx is doing her thing. Excited, free hitting. Here we go, triple kill. Posh with a quadra kill. And a TP going top in top lane. Kersey looks like he might just be trying to finish this game. Elder is up, but with four members down, 50 Cal Taco, there is not much that he can do here. It looks like it's going to be UNC winning game three and winning the series. I would love to talk to Kersey about his performance in these past two games. It was astounding, and I think that ETSU just lost the game because they didn't hit tab. Kersey completed the Guardian Angel on himself. So if they got all five onto him, it wouldn't have mattered if they killed him. Hecarim, uh, he's running around, but he's going to fall too. The Nexus will be next as we see that UNC clutches up the series after going down in game one with their hyper-aggressive draft. Um, we see that they are able to take this scrappy fighting game and push back against ETSU in the third game to clutch out the series. Yep, and a great way to end it off. Uh, I mean, you, like you said, Kersey on that auction played an amazing game, but one player that I really wanted to highlight was Jay Young on that Akali. He did absolutely so much, being able, with the help of Seppi, of course, getting those ganks off top, but, I mean, a solo kill coming in on that at Gwen and playing that sideline and winning that sideline over and over, it, it was just a great play from Jaehyung on that Akali, and even in game two on that Aurelia. Yeah, we saw amazing play from all players in those second two games. They really pulled themselves together after the first game, where a lot of other teams would have just completely lost their morale. They picked a very aggressive draft, and they got punished for it. But they were able to pull it back, collect themselves, and say, this is what we need to do to win the next game. And they did. Um, I am hearing that we are going to get an interview, so we will have a short break after this uh, nice conversation, but we will see uh, a little bit into the minds of UNC. What do you think we're going to see from UNC in the next weeks, now that we've seen a little bit better of an idea of how they can play? Um, I, I think the draft needs to be taken a little bit look at and um i love them being able to adapt but uh i think that first draft and maybe even some questionable picks in game two and three uh could be possibly taken looked at um but overall scrap the game one comp i think it's definitely something to look into and play uh play jinx play jinx jinx has a 100 percent win rate in the series it it looks pretty good. So maybe it it's looks just pretty the good. answer. But I believe we will be taking a quick break. Don't click away. We will have an interview with you guys shortly. And go UNC.
Welcome back, everybody. We are joined here now with Rami and Jay Young from UNC after a big win against ETSU in their second week of CLOL. Rami and Jay Young, how are you guys feeling? Feeling pretty good and relieved after the reverse sweep. Same here. I think for a game two and three, we really figured out like how we wanted to play and like our identity. Yeah, I mean, game two and three looked very, very convincing and very, very good. Um, I know we have some questions about game one. I don't know if, Ryan, you want to start us off. Yeah, so I think that the first thing that we have to get into, we need to address the dark horse in the room, uh, or the, the elephant, I should say. Um, the first game's draft was, um, it was interesting, and it did not pan out. I, I want to know not so much why that first draft happened, why the aggression came out, but I want to know what the conversation between the two games looked like, where you guys figured out this isn't going to work uh so like with game one we just picked a lot of sinning champs um like i i knew i would be able to get moves in the bot lane and we wanted champs that could capitalize off of that and just have a lot of damage to follow up on cc so like nidalee renekton is a pretty famous combo because it's just a stun into a sphere and it's hard to mess up um and we kind of got that done I think I was like level two hex flashing over Raptor wall to get a kill and everything. But the issue is I don't think we are refined enough on these champs. And it's like, if we're ahead and we make one mistake, it doesn't matter. Cause how can Renekton play into like Corky, Jinx, Diego, things that zone him away. So we just said like, we'll play a similar style, but easier to execute things and less punishing things. Yeah, I totally agree with Rami here. It's just like game one, it felt like we had a very unforgiving comp. Like, I think we played like early pretty well. We capitalized on like how our comp worked, but the moment like some of us like fucked up is, or sorry, excuse me. Oh well, yeah, the moment we like messed up, it just felt like it was a bit unplayable, especially from my end. I did not like being renekton in that game. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it was a very, very tough game uh, once it got past about 20 minutes, I think. Um, but again, two and three, Game two and three, I think you guys played a lot, a lot better. One thing I, I was kind of curious about was um, it seems like in these drafts, you guys are letting a lot of those uh, really highly contested picks that I've seen in like in high level, like LCS stuff. Um, Victor, uh, Corky, you're letting through sometimes. And uh, Jinx is usually getting picked up. But I think especially in the mid lane, like the Victor and the Corky um, and those drafts, what is like the thought process behind those? Like, do you think it's just more comfort style stuff or do you think maybe they're just not as strong with the drafts you're making? Like, what is the thought process there? Um, I think a lot of those mid picks are super strong. It's just, there are a few reasons. So reason one is we have a lot of answers like Akshan into Victor, for example, it makes it really hard for him to play. Um, comfort is very big. Um, ben is very comfy on the Akshan. Maybe a bit too comfy, as we saw. He was kind of swinging <laughs> yep. in there at times. Um, and another big thing is a lot of these champs are super strong, but they suffer early. And if you're not conscious enough of support rooms and jungle gank timers, you can get punished. Like, I was constantly mid lane, uh, especially if Victor didn't have flash. I was just like, mid lane is my home, and I'm going to punish him. So, yeah. Yeah, like Rami said, like we have answers for those picks. Mm -hmm. And a pick I wanted to bring out was like the Gwen pick. I, we kind of knew that sh this uh, their top laner was gonna steer toward that pick because it's one of his more frequently played. And the moment like they pick Gwen, I was like, ah, oh, please pick me a Kali. I can kill her. And I saw so many like windows to like take advantage of the matchup. Yeah, that's the perfect segue that we wanted. A question that we had on the desk, uh, specifically for uh, Jay Gung, you're the newest member to this varsity squad. You were the person, I believe unless I'm wrong, who was brought in last among the group. And when we saw you, uh, we saw a lot of power picks coming out. We've seen Irelia. We've seen lots of games on Akali. And we see that you're really very easily going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these other top laners. So I'm interested to hear uh, what was your experience like? We heard last week how Rami and Adrian kind of fit together and how they came together to learn the bot lane. But what is your experience coming into the team and then having to learn to navigate the island on your own? I think, yeah, so like like you said, yeah, I'm the newest member. So it feels like part of like 
joining the team is uh, like the assimilation process, like figuring out like my identity, what to do. And I think I'm trying to find that balance of figuring out what I want to play and what is good for the team. And I think that'll take some trial and error. Like in some scrims, sometimes we have a bit of like team dynamic issues, like figuring out who wants what. But I think it's an uphill thing for us and it's only going to get better. I mean, you looked great on the Irelia. You looked great on the Akali. True. I think it was. Uh, Thank you. It was definitely very, very well played. And again, it's those are very tough champions to pilot. Even into like the set, we were even a little concerned about on on the desk. But uh, it seemed like you definitely knew what you were doing there. Um, one thing I wanted to ask Rami was, I know in the past couple of years, just seeing you play competitive, you've been. Uh, You've been here, you've been there, you've been top, you've been support, you're playing AD, you're playing this. Um, how do you feel like, you know, this role swapping and going around the map has really attributed to, like, where you are now? Because I feel like you roamed more than I've ever seen more su a lot of supports roamed, and especially compared to the, even the other team support. It, it just seems like there's these play style difference that might be... Um, maybe attributed to this. So where do you feel like that's kind of brought you here today? I think he was just uh, lost. <laughs> maybe. So maybe he just didn't know where he was going. Um, among my budget Tyler 1 journey of trying every <laughs> role, I've kind of got like a good understanding of what everyone wants as far as roles go. So like, when does mid want me to crash their wave? When should I protect a top freeze? When do I need to dive this lane? Um, and the biggest thing is, like, when am I safe to leave my ADC? I think Adrian died a couple of times for my moves, but uh, I think he was just upset. <laughs> um, but, like, I think playing all these roles has allowed me to get a good understanding of what all 10 people in the game want and where I should be on the map. It's kind of, like, every, every play has pros and cons. Um, and I have a decent understanding of, like, denying a wave here is better than crashing this wave mid or whatever. Um, and I've also learned a decent bit about matchups. So I know like what mid lanes I can gank for, whereas which ones are just for me. I can't go there at all. Which ADCs need their handheld, which can be on their own, stuff like that. Yeah, Rami's been incredibly like versatile for us. Like I, his last played role was top, so he always tells me like what matchups are good. And mm. that's like helped me with like assimilating with the team because even though it is a bit nerve-wracking, I feel like I'm in good hands. Yeah. We uh, we love to have you here in the interview with us. We're so glad that you joined us, and we hate to let you go. But as we are reaching the end, uh, we'd love to hear uh, what what is next for Rami, what is next for Jay Gung, what is next for UNC League of Legends as a whole. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking to build Zhonya's more. I think that item is broken on supports. Uh, our next match is Saturday at 4, as always. So if you're in the stream now, I hope to see you in the stream again next time. And I hope the casters are just as handsome in the next match. Oh, Rami, you're too kind. You're too kind. What about you, Jay Young? <laughs> I think moving forward, I think I'm just trying to brace myself to realize that yeah, there are going to be like low, mem low moments. There are going to be good moments. But I know in the end, we're going to come out stronger and better from the matches. Very good. Very great to have you guys here. And I think we'll be closing out the interview now and wrapping up the stream here soon. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Again, like they said, they have another match next week. I believe we will be streaming. Um, and make sure to follow, subscribe if you can. That Prime's always great. Um, look out on UNC Esports Discord for any upcoming events. You know, we always got stuff going on, and we're always happy to have you guys here. So, League from... Houses, 25 <laughs> minutes, Gaming Arena. Be there. There you go. League House. Uh, maybe you guys can show up. Rami, are you going to be there? Uh, I will be there. 15 or so minutes late but yes i will be there well if you go to the in-houses then you'll have a chance to meet the famous rami baba so be true look out for that but um as far as it goes here thank you guys for coming thank you guys for showing the love and support to unc and from me and ryan um have a great day see you guys